coming up on today's episode. I asked Jordan how he is, the meaning of life comes up, and then just this whole conversational existential spiral. We review Nomadland, the Riddler design, and the Batman mythos. We review The Father, and we review Army of the Dead. Hello and welcome to or welcome back to the Fun Filter Podcast. I am Sam and I am joined as ever by Jordan. Hello. Hello. How are you today, Jordan? I'm okay. Yeah? Yeah. Why is the the dubious about that? No, I am okay. You are okay? Yes. You're okay? Yes. Are you any better than okay? I am where I am usually at. Well, how how is... I think that's okay. Well, by your standards, yeah, I suppose, by definition. What, What is okay for you? Okay. Um, well, it's just like, yeah, I'm here, you know? But is that it? <laughs> I suppose. That, that you're here? It's more of a, um, just like a general, you you can't just be like, yeah, I'm good. Why not? Because people might interrogate that. It's like, well, I don't, there's nothing that's really happening that's out of the ordinary here. Yeah. We might be one of the only cultures, because good now, it, it's kind of synonymous with okay. Mm. Use on the scale, right? It's okay, then it's good, then it's excellent. Yeah. But when people say, yeah, I'm good, that tends to mean I'm all right. Mm. I'm fine. Yeah. But only in Britain, maybe there are some other countries, mm. where when so- if someone you ask someone how they were and they said, oh, I'm really good, you'd be skeptical. Yes. Like, why? Yeah. What's happened? Yeah. What's going on with you? That's the thing. Because if you say... Who is this person? If you say, like, oh, I'm really good, then yeah, yeah, it might invite interrogation or skepticism. I mean, interrogation's fine. Well, yes, but, but like, that that's assuming that you can, you know why you're good. Because yeah. you should just be okay, but you're good, so clearly you're doing something well. Well, if you came over and I said, how are you, and you said, really good, mm. I would question it because that's not a phrase that you would use to describe your experience. No, not me personally. No, no, yeah, but generally speaking, if you were to meet someone new mm. and they went, really good, my brain would go to, oh, God. Yeah, if they're a new person, like, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, okay. Brilliant. You probably just, like, talk to people. Yeah, like, you, compliment people. Yeah, just know. like, if you're in a lift with someone, just like, oh, hello. It's right. like, what are you doing? Yeah. Or feel this comfortable. Isn't, this isn't normal human behavior. Yeah. Or engage with people over their pets. Yeah. That's a thing, isn't it? Yeah. Or cats. The well, kind of I'm, person that walks along the street and sees a cat and goes, hello, cat, and in, engages with a cat. I mean, I'm susp- suspicious of that anyway. Right, okay. But if someone's walking their dog, like, oh, look, at there's the dog. Yeah. That's deemed okay. It's mm. appropriate for some people to do that. Mm. But why, that it seems to be confined to that. You couldn't go up to someone and go, oh, you, I really like your hat. No. But, but why is it... Because, well, the, the pet is sort of a proxy in that situation, isn't it? You're, you're really def- de- directing... <laughs> yeah, you're really directing your affections to the pet. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, oh, pro- I love your dog, but it's the dog that you, you I love. I wouldn't say it's a proxy, because it's not like you go up to the... the it'd be a pro- The human could be a proxy, but it's not like you walk up to the human and start tussling their hair. No. When you really mean to do it for the dog. No, no, no. You are... It's, yeah, it's not a proxy, because you're not using the dog to actually address the human. No, you're, you're, addressing you're the human. using the human to address the dog. Well, kind of. Yeah. Not really. I think when people go up to dogs, go, oh, dog, oh, hello, dog. And mm. they talk to the dog. Yeah. And then they might go, oh, it's a good dog. <laughs> the guy will go, yeah. You did all right. Yeah, it's uh, about him two years. He's a good yeah. dog. You know. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a proxy necessarily, but that, that seems to be socially acceptable. Yeah. Talking because- to children sometimes if they're with their parents is socially acceptable. Yes. If you're beyond a certain age yeah, or yeah. before a certain age. Mm. But that's kind of it, right? Is there what what are the other situations in which it's just okay? I guess like asking for the time or Yeah, travel, asking for the time that sort of thing. Or directions. directions. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you need just like basic information. Yeah, like, like that you can't yeah. go without asking. Yeah, exactly. But um, you, you'd never walk up to someone and go, unless you're doing a club, you know. Yeah. You'd never go, oh, yeah, I really like your cardigan. Yeah, that's the, like, I'm, av- I'm avoiding those situations yeah. where, like, the point is to sort of be social with people. Yeah. Uh, just when you're, like, out in the wild. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just, I like your cardigan. It's like, help. <laughs> Do you ever consciously, um, well, let's go back to what's okay for you. Okay. What, what's an average feeling for you? Well, okay kind of denotes, the the lack of things, I suppose. Just like if I just wake up and it's just like, oh, it's normal. That's okay. What well, what's normal is what I'm asking. I okay, suppose. just like being there. 
Just being there. Yeah, if I don't, if I can't, like, if my mood is not seemingly being affected by anything. Right. Like, oh, I'm not having a bad day. I'm not having a good day. Okay. Just, I'm just kind of here. Right. That's okay. That's a bad day, though, surely. Is it? Well, yeah, if well, you're so feeling no, nothing. When I say I'm here, it's not like, oh, I'm numb. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, I have nothing. I feel nothing. Yeah. It's not that. It's just like, yeah, I'm just, it's just another one. It's just another day. Yeah. But you said you, well, you don't feel good. Well, I don't feel bad either. But you must be feeling something. Well, I feel okay. <laughs> you feel okay. You That's the thing. Right. If I can't interrogate it, I just naturally go, oh, I'm just okay. Try and interrogate it, though. No. Let's try and do some mindfulness. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah, let's, no, don't, 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 opening it. the podcast by deconstructing my world. Yeah, I'm going to, going to do that. What, do you suffer with any pain? No. None, generally speaking. Like, your typical, like, oh, what's that? Right. You just kind of get them every now and again. Like, Ache or... Yeah, it's like, right. oh, I don't know what that's doing there. But you don't have any... Pain. No, nothing ongoing. Okay. Lethargy. Well, if I'm tired. Well, yeah. I mean, do you generally <laughs> have lethargy? Um, uh, no. Okay. If I do, I can usually attribute it to something. Okay. Do you have... Um, are, are you happy? Um, well, I'm not. Not. It sounds to me like you're not happy. Okay. Well, what... What, well, what? what makes... You, well, wait, okay, from whence do you derive happiness? Um, what thing, makes you happy? Things I like. What do you like? Th- the things that I do, typically. Them's being. I don't like this. This feels, this feels very personal. I'm tra- <laughs> it is personal, yeah. Yeah, I don't you know. You can ask me the same questions yeah, if you, you want. You warmed I'd... me up sufficiently to be this personal, <laughs> I don't think. No, I have, I have. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust the, me. The last <laughs> ten years don't count. I'm talking about right now on oh, the podcast. Oh, I see, okay. Um, ah, you know, why not? Why not start here? Okay. It's all unplanned. I wasn't planning on doing no, this. No, you were As you know, no. we've got nothing. Yes. Um, and I suspect, <laughs> part of my um, dubiousness is I suspect if I were to turn it around on you, and yeah. go like, oh, well, let's, let's do you now. Yeah. You'd be like, ah. Uh. No, I just said, if you can ask the same questions to me if you want. Okay. But we're on you at the moment. Okay. Yeah, what brings you happiness? Um, things I like. Yeah, what do you like? The hobbies. What then? What hobbies? The video games. Okay. I, I enjoy... When when it when it's doing it properly, I enjoy video editing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Like watching stuff. Uh-huh. Like hanging out with you. Uh huh. My uh, friends. Okay. Just, uh, the friends that I do have, mm-hmm. I think. Um, yeah. What do you want that you don't have? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm sure there's stuff. Go on. Can you not just <laughs> can you not just leave me? In just blissful ignorance. I want to try. I'm, cle- and- I'm clearly just like I'm clearly not the ideal here. Yeah. But I'm like doing all right. I'm trying to convince you, I suppose, that you're unhappy. Okay. I just, that's where I want to get to. Okay. And that yeah. benefits me. How? Well, you might try and do something about it. Well, what if I don't? What if I just realize I'm unhappy and go, well, that's that then. What? I don't know what that means. It's like, well, I, I guess I'm just unhappy. <laughs> what kind of person that's, does that's, that? Sucks. Who does that? Either you go one way or the other. Yeah. No, well, I really assume, am. Kill assume myself. I'm going the other. Well, you're gonna, you'll kill yourself then. Okay. We're not going to do and that. You want to do, you? do that to me? Too. You do not constitute. You are not constitutionally capable of killing yourself. Okay. That much I know. You calling me a coward? No, not, <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> you, you, you're trying to play chicken with me. Is that what you're doing? I don't think you've got that in you. Okay. I don't think you're, you've got suicidal. Um, yeah, I don't think that's in you. Okay. That is a good thing. Okay. Uh, the thanks. Yeah. It's all right. All right. Uh, yeah, so what are you missing? What's your life missing? I don't know. Things, I think. Yeah, go on. Um, well, you know, I don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. Well, what do you want that you don't have? Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> go, go on. <laughs> well, you, you answer a question. All right. Well, yeah. uh, okay. I mean, we're, we're going to come back to that. Okay. So you're going to have to answer it at some point. Right. But go on and ask me well, a question. Well, uh, you don't have to answer it now, though, is the point. Not the second, no. but before the podcast is over. Okay. Go on, then ask me a question. All right. Um, are you all right? Uh, I'm okay today, yeah. 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 Is that typical for you? To be okay? Yeah. Well, yeah, by definition, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And how, how, how is that? How does that work? Me being okay? Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose by my metric, it would be not feeling unwell. Okay. If I'm not feeling unwell, like, okay, well, that's put me in the positive today. Okay. I'm not feeling unwell today. Right. So that's, I'm a bit tired. Okay. Um, that's it, really. Okay. I don't feel unwell most days. Yeah, well, I do is the thing. Not most no, yeah, days. No, I yeah, mean, yeah, I'm yeah. saying, like, I, I agree with you. Yes. I don't feel unwell most days. Yeah. So that's a good thing? Or is that an okay thing? Well, no, I mean, for, as far as you're concerned, because you're never unwell, mm. 
Uh, yeah, the default. Yeah, being well is yeah. to be expected. You have to be a bit better than well. You have to be a bit better than not being unwell for it to be good. Okay. I would say. Right. Whereas for me, if it's not a day where... Not unwell. I know it's like I'm an ill person. Hmm. Where I'm not experiencing some ache or dizziness or whatever. Mm. That pushes me into the positive okay. echelon. Okay. This is one of those days. Okay. Where I'm a bit tired. Um, I had the vaccine a couple of days ago. But that's basically over. Okay. Like the after effects of that. Hmm. What else? Oh, I was in a quite a good mood earlier. Okay. Uh, before before you came. Before I showed up. <laughs> oh, God, he's here again. <laughs> before you showed up. Yeah. Um, i got to stop inviting him over out of politeness. I know. I keep doing it every time. Yeah, he goes well, to leave and I'm just it's like, It's a professional back. obligation today, isn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, p- pretty, pretty good day, I think. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because the reason I bring that up, again, is because we've got nothing, but also, it's like, do you ever consciously, do you ever sit down and think, you know what? I'm all things considered. I'm in a pretty good state of affairs. Yes. I'm not not to say that it couldn't be better or there there are things lacking or whatever. No, no, no. But because I'm like you're fine today. Yeah. And in, in the scheme of the, the world, in the grand scheme of things, so if people ask me like on Tinder, for example, how are you? Mm. Or if you ask somebody, it's usually I'm all right. How are you? Mm. Like you know what? You're actually better than that, aren't you? I think a lot of the time, okay. you're better than that. You're doing pretty well. well you, Especially if you've got the things that I don't have, which most people do have. Okay. Right. So it's like if I'm having a decent day, I'll kind of overshoot in a way because, mm. because like, by my, in the context of Sam, it is a really good day. Okay. So I, I, it's a hedge, isn't it? Mm. it? When people say I'm all right, it's because yes, if they say they're great they might arouse suspicion yes, <laughs> or interrogation or couple just be worried about being annoying. Yeah. But, but the other thing, if you go the other way, the people don't do that either. No. It's like, yeah, I'm not that good today. It feels like you're, yeah, you're not allowed to say that. Yeah. You're fishing. Like, I was being polite when I asked. Yeah. When people ask you how you are, they don't care. It's very yeah, yeah. rare. They actually care. Yeah. And I think everyone knows that. And so I'm not going to burden you with too much light or too much darkness. Yes. I'm going to say I'm fine. Yeah. Because if people gave honest answers to that question, can you imagine <laughs> what life would be like? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I'm not. I'm really not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Having a bad few months. Like, oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I uh, just give me the coffee now? And then maybe I'll stay <laughs> yeah, and listen. Maybe I'll stay. Yes. It's a, it's a defense, isn't it? Mm. But so I try and kind of surmount that by overshooting. Yeah, I'm really good. Okay. I'm really good. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's, you, you got to keep some perspective though. Don't yes. You, you got to keep perspective with these things. Cause as like, it's clear that simply with amongst you and I, our okays are different. Yeah. Our okays mean different things. Yes. And then if you expand that to not just like, like an international, well, a countrywide thing, but like an international thing, yeah. global thing, our okays mean a completely different thing to people who live in like, uh, Oxfam but, commercials. Yes. Well, it's it's the whole first world problems thing, mm. isn't it? What was that NSPCC advert that they played every day, black and white? There was a kid in a cot. Oh, they're all like that. Oh, I'd be another one I'm talking about. I, I, I had that song, but I can't remember what it is. It's ding, 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 ding. Doom. Like, it, like, what's that? It's like, it, it's, it's just them in slow motion. Yeah. And it's like, uh, Jimmy is, is eight years old. His father pushes him down the stairs. And yeah. then it like freeze frames and it goes, do Like a really dramatic, okay. like, dun. I can't really remember. I remember being melancholy. Yeah, it's like melancholy piano. Oh, right. And then they tell you why they're being abused. Okay. And then they play this really like low discordant, like, doom. Okay. Right. To make you feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And also for the so the drama will land. Yeah. Because we need we need to really sell. Yeah. People need you know, people won't just buy this whole like, oh, an eight eleven year old being pushed down the stairs is a bad thing. Yeah. We need to emphasize it with discord and piano. Yeah. Well wh- what's the meaning of life then? Oh jeez. Sam, we're, we're fifteen minutes in. <laughs> we haven't even done the coming up. <laughs> I know. Just quickly, what's quick quickly, what's the meaning of life? Okay, meaning of life is to be <laughs> there. To be there. Yeah. R- is that really all it is? For yourself and for the people you like, I think. Right. That is to say like, oh no, you just be there for yourself and then I guess the other people. No, no, no. It's like being right there. Well, I was talking to someone about Ayn Rand okay. yesterday. Oh, she has ideas about this sort of stuff, doesn't she? Ayn Rand. Yeah. Yeah. And I disagree with her, with objectivism's take on the meaning of life. Okay. Which is... The pursuit of individual happiness. Right. Which is not a bad thing, but I think it falls short. Okay. 
Because if you're going off soma, the somatic mm. relationship with life, you could be hooked up. You have an IV into your arm and just of heroin, you know, like just enough that it doesn't kill you. Yeah. But you're always in a blissful state. Right. And, okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. If you're just going off that. It's a, if you go by Jordan Peterson's reasoning for, for the meaning of life, he would say it's about uh, finding personal responsibility, which sounds right. Okay. Well, I suppose it's another way of saying being there for yourself and for your friends. Yeah. The, a, kind, adopting kind responsibility. Of, kind of what I said. Kind of, sure. Being kind, there for Well, I think it's a bit more than people. being, okay. Yes, being there for other people, sure. Yeah. Yeah, not just being there. No, no, yeah. You don't just like yeah. show up and you're just like, well, I'm here. I'm here now. I'm doing my bit. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no I'm actually present right. for you. Yes. And for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what is your life missing then? <laughs> um, I have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You do know. Do I? Yeah, of course you do. Well, tell me then. Well, purpose. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have... This is personal, obviously. Yeah. You can turn it back on me whenever you want. Okay. Um, yeah, not much personal, not much responsibility. Okay. Would you agree with that? Well, financial, I have financial responsibility and... To whom? Myself. But not really. Well, I buy my own food. I pay my way in terms of rent. I pay yes. my like car insurance and everything. Yeah. And, you know, I have finances that I have to yeah, yeah, yeah. honour. Yeah, but that's it though, right? Is that You not- pay your way. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's kind of it. Well, that's still, like, that's no mean feat. There are people out there who don't pay their way. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm just saying that this, there's there's more. Okay. There should be more, right? Yeah. 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 We'll get to it when we get to it. Okay. But that, that those those things are what your life is missing, right? What, the, the other things? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure? What are those things? I, me turning it back on you now. What, what, what are you asking? Shut up. <laughs> That's not a question. Shut up now. That's not a question. Do you have a question? No, I just shut up, please. Okay. That's not a question either. That is a question. No, it's not. There's a question mark on the end of it. I went, please? Because question mark. It's not a question though, is it? Really? It, it, it doesn't have the construction of a question. Sam. Yes. Would you yeah. be quiet, please? No. Okay. <laughs> Just say the thing. Just say the thing. <laughs> well, no, you say the thing. There's clearly something you want me to say here. Not really. I mean, I, no, no, okay. I don't have an agenda. There's yeah. nothing I want you to say. No. But we both know you're not saying something. Okay. That, that thing being? Well, you've got to say it. No, why do I have to say it? Because I asked you the question. You're just, you're, you're killing time at this point. Well, yeah, that's part of it. Okay, we'll yeah. stop it. No. Let's get somewhere. Answer the question. I'm not, no. I, Answer the question. If I'm not saying it. Yeah. And I don't know specifically what you're referring yeah, you to do. here. I don't. Yes, you do. But if I'm not saying it, there yeah. must be a reason. N- not really. Okay. We'll assume there is. Okay. You could you could bypass that by just saying it. Why have I got to say it though? Because well, you might be wrong. We I- might be thinking of completely different things. No, I'm. I'm I mean, I'm, even if we're thinking of different things, I'm still right. Mm. Are you? Yeah, because you don't have the thing I'm thinking about. Okay. So I'm right either way, whether okay. we're thinking it or not. Well, just because I don't have it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that it matters. It does, though, to you, doesn't it? No, but you don't know that. I do know that. Well, then why do you not say the thing? <laughs> why can't you say the thing? Because you're not saying it. You're this not is, saying it because I'm not saying it. This is all your... Whatever you're doing, this is all on you. No, I asked you a question. Yes. Yeah. One that I'm clearly not willing to answer. Yeah. And yet you delay well, the, further activities. Yeah. Because you're just not... You're going to keep pushing. Yeah. We'll stop. Because you need to grow up sometimes. Okay. <laughs> this is one of those instances. Is it? This is the Batman Begins all over again. <laughs> just the stubbornness. Are we actually recounted no. that story? I don't think so. Okay. Well, no, not in the podcast. No. Do you want... Well, recount it then. Well, you should probably give context, right? Well, yeah, that's part of the recounting, I would have thought. Okay. Go ahead. Do you want to take it? No, go ahead. Well, it's your, it was your problem that you had. No, you go ahead. Go on, then no. we'll return to the, the problem. No, at no, hand. no, no. It's, it's, it's you know, you're the one who you brought. You said you're the one who wanted to talk about it on the podcast. So talk about it on the podcast. No, you wanted to talk about it on the podcast. No, no. You said have we talked about it on the podcast. Yeah, I asked whether we talked about it. I didn't say. So that if I, I, had I said it. no, which I did, yeah, you wouldn't. You would have just gone. Oh, all right, let's move on then. You well, would. You wouldn't have then said. Oh, let's talk about it. No, you did say no. Yes, and then I said, "Do you want to talk about it?" But had I not said that, you yeah. tell me you wouldn't have said that. 
Well, no, I probably would have thought it necessary to the story that we're telling. Yes. It's not a matter of whether I wanted to or not. Okay. What's the point? Tell the story. No, no, you brought it up, you tell the story. No, I didn't. Go ahead. No, no, you brought it up. No, you brought it up. No, you brought it up. You oh, said it's like the I, Batman Begins. Yeah, thing. I alluded to it. Yes, and then you said, "Have we told that story on the yeah, podcast?" Yeah, because I recognise that, like, if we haven't told that story, no one's going to know what that means. That's fair enough. Yeah, I w- I would happily have just glossed over it. Okay, but if you want to, if you brought it up and you want to talk about it, go ahead. I didn't want to bring it up though. Are you going to recount the story or not? Well, I'm waiting for you to recount. The story. Oh, I'm not going to do it. So are you going to do it? Right. Well, I guess that story's not being told then. You're not going to do it then. Well, it's not my story to tell. I was there. Which means you it's were not the, your story you to were tell. The, you were the character in that story. You were the one who went through the. You were the protagonist of that story. How was I the protagonist of that story? Because you were the one who had the problem and. Over- no, the- you're the one who changed. You're the character. No, but you're the one who was faced with adversity. Yeah, and I overcame and it. You overcame that. But no, I didn't change. I ended the same way I started. Yes. You didn't. You had the arc. I didn't have an arc. Okay. Oh, so well then, your, but, so, so between us. So it's your story to between tell. Between us, yeah. we are the protagonist. Well, considering it was just the thing that happened between the two of us, I would say we're equally the protagonist. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So how do we how do we d- divide the labor here? Well, I'm, I'll happily tell it with you. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't just what, like, throw like simultaneously? it on my lap. No, not simultaneously. Okay. You may start. Okay. And I will chip in. Well, we watched the, the Dark Knight trilogy. We did. Take it away. No. Oh, carry on. <laughs> we watched the Dark just Knight trilogy. Just what a train wreck <laughs> this episode is so far. Go on. The, we, we watched the Dark... Do we do the coming up? What, what happens to the coming up? Is, has I it happened know. already? I don't... Where did we put it? I guess we're going to have to just... It's happened. Okay. It's happened already. All right, okay. Yeah. Sure. So... <laughs> Jesus. So we watched the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. And I was of the opinion prior to re- the rewatch, because we re- rewatched it in the wake of Zack Snyder. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, we have to actually watch something good now. Mm. I was of the opinion that obviously the, the Dark Knight is the best film. Mm-hmm. The second best film is The Dark Knight Rises, and the third best is Batman Begins. Because yeah. on the many occasions that I've watched Batman Begins, mm-hmm. at least high single figures, right. I've watched Batman Begins. Okay. I've always been bored. Right. Or just like. I found it, like, when I was younger, Mm because obviously, you you, I think it's like, I think you can enjoy a Christopher Nolan film the first time round. Yeah. But, like, if you're younger and you have certain expectations about, like, superhero films, it's like a shock to the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, I don't know what this is. What is this? You grow into it. Yeah. I I think I got Batman Begins, it must have been around the time, I hadn't seen it, Mm. but I got the DVD, but I, I got it, like, along with... The four other Batman films that preceded it. Right, okay. Uh, which I liked. Yeah. And you get to Batman Begins, like, oh, it's, it's, nothing's happening. Yeah. At that age. Like the, the Departed. Yeah. I got The Departed because I thought it was an action film. Mm. You know, a cop action movie. And was very disappointed. Yes. But then you kind of... It's good that I had it because, like, I think when I saw Mystic River and things started becoming a bit more mm. opening up, I was like, maybe The Departed is good. Is Maybe it's re- a really... <laughs> Maybe it's a really good Maybe, film. Yeah, worth, worth my time. Right? Yeah, I happen to just have it there, you know. But yes, anyway, I, I agree that if you're young, yeah, you might not be getting a lot so, of... So yeah, when I was young, I didn't yeah. like it. And then as as I was growing into cinema, yeah, I wasn't growing into Batman Begins, mm-hmm. which led me to believe that I, it wasn't actually good and or I didn't actually like it. Right. Um, but we rewatched it recently and uh, we watched Batman Begins and we were just complimenting it, basically, mm-hmm. from start to finish. Just how prevalent the the... the theme of fear mm-hmm. it like every character is talking about it or represented in some capacity mm-hmm. the way that they integrate batman so seamlessly into the world and all of these things we were complimenting about and then we like got to the dark knight and we were just like there in all yeah all the way through it's like i just don't i don't know how this happened it's barely possible yeah yeah, yeah. like this is this is magic yes this didn't this they won't do it again yeah if they can't do it again yeah you know and they didn't then they didn't yeah no um, and then we got to the Dark Knight Rises and we were like, oh, that, that bit's a bit weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's like, what's that? No, that doesn't make sense. Oh, that's, you know. Mm-hmm. So we got to the end of it and then you turned to me and without even giving me a chance, right. you were just like, so, w- w- give me the order. Yeah. I said, no, I think I asked, has your opinion changed? Yeah, has your opinion changed? Because crucially, going in, I was a big fan of Batman Begins. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the oh, Dark yeah, Knight Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, there was a conflict of interest. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because you, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, you were a fan of Batman Begins. Yeah. Dark Knight is also your favorite, yeah, yeah, yeah. but Batman Begins is your cl- clear second. I wanted to convince you that it was a really good film. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And The Dark Knight Rises wasn't so much. Yes. So you yeah. turned to me and said, has your opinion changed? Yeah. And me feeling cornered. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it was just like, oh, it's like, yeah, I, 
the credits are still rolling and you're you're on right. me straight away. Okay. I was like cornered. Yeah. Okay. What's the pressure here? <laughs> to give me to give you an answer. Okay. But it wasn't a hard. You knew the answer. Did I? Yeah. I don't know because I was. Oh, you had to think about it, did you? After yeah. Dark Knight Rises ended, you still had to th- go. What do I think? Yeah. It wasn't just plainly evident. To yeah. You. You're lying. No, I'm not. You're, you're lying. I, li- I liked it a lot. When I saw it, it was like, I put it like number two on my favorite films of all time. Yes. So like- uh, 10 years ago. Anne Hathaway, she was like, oh, that's one of the best performances in cinema. <laughs> Tom Hardy's like, oh, that's one of the best performances yeah. in cinema. Yeah, a 10 lot, years ago. Yeah, a lot changed. I needed time to process that. But you were like, no, you are going you to tell me- You needed time to process you were going it. To, you were going to tell me right now- It's a film. That Batman Begins is a superior film. It's not a life-changing thing. It's you just rewatch the films and oh clearly I like that one more now. Well, maybe for you. Did you really have to ruminate upon maybe it? Maybe for you, Sam. Maybe we're not all as we're clearly not all as in tune with ourselves as you. I don't, are. I don't think that's. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel I don't like that's kind of to do with it. I don't know why you had to flaunt this. Like oh look right. at me, I'm able to know what I think straight away. I, I don't know, always know what I think. Well, I, I I guess I have an intuition straight away by yeah. definition. Yeah, but sometimes I think okay. about. Okay, well then I needed a moment to question my intuition. But I. Because my intuition contradicts what I know I think. So I need to reconcile all of this. And I'm being put under immense pressure here. Immense pressure. From Samuel, <laughs> who wants to know what I think straight well, away. I didn't have a spotlight in your face. And like, you know, bearing down on you with a scalpel. Was, I think I just turned to you and went, so what, what's the order now then? Yeah. And what, it wasn't like a harsh interrogation yeah, at that like, point. Yeah, like, give until me a you, second, Until, dude, you, until you, know? you turned it into one, it wasn't a harsh interrogation. It was just a question. So what do you think now? And you wouldn't answer. No. Because here's the thing, <laughs> Batman Begins, as you said, we were complimenting it all the way through. Mm. The Dark Knight, we both knew was a masterpiece. Yeah. And the Dark Knight Rises, we were finding more problems than ever before. Mm. So surely it was just evident to you that you preferred Batman Begins at this point. Well, I was letting it sit, I was sink in. I was letting it digest. Okay. I was letting it, you know. Okay. Let me make sure that, yeah, let me make sure of this. Right. Okay, so you felt under immense pressure when I asked you... If your opinion had changed, yeah, okay, maybe if you hadn't put so much pressure on me, yeah, I would have, I would be more receptive to your question. What was the pressure I was putting on you just by asking you the question? Yeah, okay, I think you need to recalibrate. With the urgency, I think of it, well, this. I didn't ask you with the urgency. No, you didn't ask you as if I went like, so what do you think? I said, so has your opinion changed? Yeah, but it was like straight away. Yeah, as soon as the film ended. Yeah, when else would I ask it? <laughs> Well, maybe you know. I have, didn't ask you halfway maybe through. Maybe have like I, a coffee first. I had the, just, de- you know, I had the I had the decency to wait to the end of the Dark Knight Rises, not halfway through where we'd already complained a lot. Mm. I at least waited till the end yeah. to ask you. So, oh, we've thank now you. watched the trilogy. Thank you very much. When should I have asked you? What? When would the appropriate time have been well, to, to ask not you? Not straight away. So when? How long should I have waited? Five minutes? Ten minutes? No, 15, no, you're, 20? no, no, no. Don't, no, don't like try and quantify this bullshit. Yeah, no, no, no. Because you're trying to quantify. Because this is not. It's not. It's like rope. Or well, not rope. Pile. It's like a pile. You yeah. can't quantify a pile. Right, yeah. Doesn't mean a pile no, doesn't No, when you see it. Yeah, doesn't mean a pile doesn't exist. Right. The fact that I can't quantify a pile does not mean that a pile does not exist. Fair enough. I'll but make... if you want to be a dick about it, you can sure. go, well, if you can't quantify a pile, then how do we know what a pile no, is? No, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. But I'll... Just because I can't quantify... I'll, ch- I'll, ch- I'll the, change it then. The exact s- second I'll change it then. Okay. I'll change it. I won't say five minutes, ten minutes. I'll say as soon as the film is over... An hour after the film is over. That's the still next, quantified. No, 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 no. Because you're still giving no, 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 me, no, 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 exact no, no. measurements no, 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 no. here. No, 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 no. You've Ra- just, you've no, just no, no, broadened no. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roughly an hour after the film has ended. A couple That's still... Shut up. <laughs> Roughly an hour after the film has ended. The next day, the next week. Surely those are separate enough that you can give me an approximation as to which one would have been most appropriate. Well, we'll never know I'm because not saying you never gave second, me that chance. I'm saying what would have been the appropriate time to wait. I don't know. Would it have been okay to ask you that, that same night? Well, what I do know is the time that you gave me was not sufficient. No, but I'm asking you what would have been sufficient. Okay. Should well, I how could you, I possibly answer Should that? I have asked you that night? How long do you think you would have needed to really sit and think about what you thought of the Batman trilogy. Longer than what you gave me. Okay, but like... Which uh, again, is really the only answer I can give you. Would the here. night have sufficed? If we'd gone home and then reconvened the next day, would that have been enough time? Well, that probably would have felt a bit silly, wouldn't it? Too long? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it, it was okay to ask you that night. Just not as soon as the credits rolled. No. Right, okay. So it's somewhere... Because the film was still technically on. So it's somewhere between credits starting... Yeah. ...and the next day. Yes. Right, so can you narrow it down a little bit? 
10 minutes or no, an hour? 10 because, minutes or no, an hour? Because 10 that, minutes or an hour? Because that is quantifying it, sir. 10 minutes or an hour? I'm not going to quantify it. It's not precisely it. quantifying it. It's roughly quantifying it. It's still... Qu- quantify is still in there. So I, I specifically said I wouldn't quantify it. I specifically said I couldn't quantify it. Yeah, to the and second. And trying to get me to quantify it yeah. is, a, is, is, is an unfair tactic no, it's that not. you're employing. If I was asking you three or four minutes, that would be a bit unfair. Yeah. I'm asking you ten minutes or an hour. Okay. Which, are those or are those not still quantifications? Yes, but they're quite loose, far apart quantifications. But are they still quantifications? Right. If I asked you, I don't know, your child has died, mm. right? What would be the appropriate time to be over your grief? Well, you wouldn't ask someone like a, a question no, like that. But I'm that asking you because when they're in the throes of grieving. That's why I'm asking you. Yes. Now, because you're not, are you? No. Has your child died? Well, I don't know. I, I'm feeling <laughs> some grief at the moment. If okay. I'm being honest. Let's change the question slightly. I don't know. Um, you get divorced. Okay. How long do you have to wait before it's kind of okay to get married again? A year, five years, or ten? Depends on the person now, you meet. I, I would say, out of those three, a year. Okay. You probably don't have to wait five years to get married. You probably don't have to wait ten. Mm. Maybe a year is too soon. I don't know. But out of those three options, I would say I edge closer to a year than anything else. Okay. So do you edge closer to ten minutes, an hour, or two hours? What, for getting remarried? Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I'd rather get to know the person a bit more okay. first, quite frankly. Batman, then. Ten okay. minutes, an hour, or two hours. I couldn't possibly. You couldn't possibly. No, because no. as I've as I've explicitly said before, right. that is a quantification. Yeah. A thing that I said I would not do. But this is you to a T, isn't it? Is it? Yes, it is. Because when people say I can't quantify it, it means I can't specifically nail it down to a second or a minute or whatever. Mm. But pe- most people can give a rough approximation, can't they? Okay. Roughly, how many people in the world? Seven billion. 20 billion or 50 billion. Okay. Which one? Well, no, because that has an Which answer. one, George? That has a specific answer to Which it. Which one? That has an answer, Sam. Yeah, no, all you those can... all those three are wrong. So which one is no, it? No, no, no. Roughly, is no, it? No, because you're being unfair again. I'm not being unfair. You are being unfair again because there is an actual population that we can consult. So there is a... No, right. well, actually... Even, th- though no, no, all no, no, of, no. even though all of those figures are wrong, one yeah. of those figures is closer to the actual answer than the rest. Yes. So there is a correct answer. There is no correct answer to how long were you supposed to leave me to digest my opinion. There is a correct the, There is a correct answer for you. There is not a correct answer. For you, there is. Okay. You can't say generally how long is appropriate before you ask someone their opinion. Yeah. But given that you're you and you should be an authority on that. Okay. You should know approximately how long I should have given you how l- for the complexity to gestate in your well, system. Well, let's let's ask you to vaguely roughly quantify a thing. Okay. How much on. longer do you think you have to know me to know that I am not an authority on myself? <laughs> Fair enough. Yes. But you are, aren't you? If anyone is you, well, you should be. <laughs> An authority on yourself. Okay. Can you really not narrow it down to one of those three? Ten minutes, an hour or two? I don't know. I'd say an hour, but only because that's in the middle. But only because... All right, fine. An hour. All right, so half an hour or hour and a half? No. What do we do? <laughs> no, because you're just going to keep doing this until we get to a specific no, figure. No, I'm really not. I'm not... I'm not... I don't want to drive you to a specific figure. Okay. I just want to know... If it wasn't okay to ask you when, as soon as the film ended, mm. when would it have been okay? Right. But you can't give me an answer. No. Do you not think it would have been strange if I not ask you as soon as the film ended? We just watched the films, and then an hour passed, and then I go, so, what has your opinion changed? Yes, it would have been strange. But right. also, just, like, jumping to, like, okay, I want to know it now. Well, I, right. I, let's, re- let's revisit what actually happened. Okay. We watched the Batman trilogy. Mm. I can't remember across how many nights... Was it three three nights or was it... Yeah, it was a film a night. It was a film a night, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, okay. So it wasn't like we binged the trilogy even. No. You'd already, you already had time to gestate with the first two. Yeah, but and not the last one. And then we watched the one. third not the one, one. Not the one... Through, through which, all of which we were complaining. Yes. And as soon as the film ended, given that the point of the exercise as well was to see if your opinion had changed... Well, no, the point of the exercise was just, I want to rewatch these films okay, yes. as for having, after after having the misery of Zack Snyder. Okay, that too. Yeah. But there was that ancillary objective as well, right? I suppose. You you prefer Rises, I prefer Begins. Is that going to be, is that going to change? Right. After having watched it. Mm. And I would say, 
given <laughs> that we were praising Batman Begins all the way through, mm. we both knew The Dark Knight was the best, and The Dark Knight Rises, we were complaining all the way through. Mm. Me turning to you as soon as the film ended and going, so, has your opinion changed? Would have just, you, you would have just laughed and gone, yeah, it obviously has. Okay. Because of how verbally I was expressing that as much as we were watching the films. But let's assume for a moment yeah. my opinion had not changed. Okay. Sincerely, it had yeah, not yeah, changed. Okay. All right. Wouldn't you want to know why? Yeah. And do you not think that immediately after the film has ended... Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you agree that it's not a sufficient enough time to recognise why my opinion has not changed? No. No? No. Why? Maybe, okay, so if I'd asked you, has your opinion changed, and you had said no, yeah, I would have said why, and had you, had you gone, give me a minute. Yeah. I would have. Okay. Oh, no, I demand reasons now. Okay. No, I wouldn't have done that. That's not how it felt. I had just asked you if your opinion had changed. I just turned to you yeah. as a human being and said, has your opinion changed? I, I wasn't scowling at you. No. I wasn't wielding any weaponry. I just asked you a question. And you're like, oh, I'm under this pressure all of a sudden. <laughs> you need to get perspective, my friend. <laughs> um, yeah, no, if you'd said no, yeah, knee jerk, I would have gone, why? Mm. And you'd gone, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it yet, mm. but I'll work it out. Then we would have returned to it later. We wouldn't have because you. But know, given how self-evidently I, that wasn't the I case, I know and yeah. you know that you yeah. would not have believed me. But no, I wouldn't have believed you. No. no, no. But the reason I wouldn't have believed you, a again because of how how vituperative you were about rises and how glowing you were talking, glowingly you were talking about Batman Begins. Mm. Anyone with a pair of ears would deduce that you prefer Batman Begins. So there's that. So that's why I wouldn't have believed you. But I also wouldn't have believed you because you impose these structs, these mental structures on things where, as we'll soon come to learn, I've won somehow. <laughs> if you say that you prefer Batman Begins, that's the only reason I wouldn't have believed you. Like, oh, he's doing a Jordan. Right. His opinion has changed. He's just doing a Jordan. Okay. He can't concede because it, uh, that somehow then he's lost something right. and I've gained something. Okay. As though it's a power game, as though it's, there's a trans- transactionary thing going on. Okay. Which it obviously isn't. It obviously isn't, but you have to admit that the fact that my opinion changed yeah. and yours didn't, yeah. and now we're both in alignment, yeah. implicit within that is the fact that you were right all along. No, it's an opinion. No. Yes. <laughs> no. It's an opinion. No, the point is <laughs> you had this opinion... Which you've had for a while. Yeah. And I had a contradictory opinion that you were not best pleased with. And now, not best pleased. I just didn't agree with it. all of a sudden, like, oh, yes, I, Sam, I actually, you were right all along. It's got nothing to do with being right or wrong. It's an opinion. Yeah. But it's your opinion. It happens to be my opinion. Yeah. Yes. Which you've held for a while. Yeah. And I'm supposed to just accept, like, oh, on this rewatch, somehow, suddenly... I, I, well, I, I saw Batman Begins. When was the last time you watched Batman was. Begins? Oh, God. Like, with you, like, a couple of years ago, I think. No? Years ago? Yeah. So then you still preferred Rises over... Yeah, yeah. Okay. But now it's been years, mm. and your tastes have refined. Mm. I'm not saying refined, by the way, in the uh, praiseworthy sense, necessarily. I just mean they've sharpened. Yeah. You know more what you like. Yeah. Why on earth would it be a loss for you to say that you now prefer Batman Begins. It'd been years. I watch these films at least once a year. Mm. I'm more familiar with them. Mm. So explain yourself. No. (laughs) No? No. Okay. You have to. Why? Because we're talking about it. No. No. No? You're not going to explain yourself. No. Right. Okay. (laughs) I don't know where to go then. No. Nor do I, which is sort of why Ex- I'm stopping. Tell me what is going through your mind with this whole, I'm going to lose if I admit that thing. What, now or then? Then. Then? Yeah. Is it happening now as well? Is it? I'm asking you, is it happening now as well? Oh, you'll have to tell me. What do you mean I have to tell you? <laughs> well, you, you know. I know what? Well, if, the, if you think it's happening now. No, I'm asking you if it's happening now. Right. But you suspect it's happening now. No. You wouldn't... Why would you ask the question? Because you said now or then. Yeah. So like, oh, why would I ask that about now? Yeah. The only reason you could have brought that up is because it is happening now. Or the, the fact that I thought that you oh, were right. implying no. that it was happening now. No, I'm not implying that. Okay. I'm asking then. Or when or when those things happen, ever happen. Right. What's going through your mind? Well, I wouldn't want you to think that you won, 
Would I? Why would I? Why? But why do you think of it in those terms? The, the, what? <laughs> why do you think of it in those terms? Well, that does happen. Are you a leftist? Am I? Is it all about power? No, it's not about power. Right. So what? What? Where are you coming from then? Is that what is this? <laughs> what is are this? you? I don't know. What's going through your mind? I don't know. When I say to you, why do you keep trying to get me to explain things that I just think? I want you to become more self-aware, okay. is what I'm getting to. More I'm, mindful of why you set these traps for yourself right. and for me, crucially. Okay. This whole winning and losing thing. What's going on? What is it? Where's it coming from? Well, it, What are you so insecure about? I'm not insecure. It definitely is. It's, not a, it's not a matter insecurity. of insecurity because what? it's not targeted at me. It's not the fact that I don't want to lose. It's the fact that I don't want you to win. They are synonymous. They are not synonymous. They're synonymous. Because the, 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 the focus is different. No, you're no. You've just chosen to phrase it that way. They're synonymous things. Okay. If you're if you're framing it as me winning means you losing. No, but I'm 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 emphasize the emphasis that I put is showing my priorities. No, 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 no. They they are the same thing. You just phrased it. No, that way. the That's same all. thing happens as a result of them. Yeah. But by saying that I don't want to lose. Yeah. By putting the emphasis on that, it's showing that it is actually about me. R- right. That I consider me losing to be the problem here. Yeah. But by emphasizing you winning, right. it shows that no, it's not about me, it's about you. I don't want you to win. Okay. So we're also just hatred for me then. Because uh, is it you don't like me winning in any situation? Or you don't like it when it's the two of us? No, you can win if you want sometimes. Okay, but just not when it comes to the two of us. Yeah. So it really is about you losing then, not no. about me winning. Yes. No. Yeah, it is. No, I don't yeah, think it, it is. Yeah, if, if it's okay in every other situation... I didn't say every other situation. Okay, so when can't I win? When is it not okay? Even though this isn't about winning and losing, you, when is it not okay for you, me to you're win? You're just asking me to quantify things again, Sam. No, no, I'm asking you, when is it not okay for me? That's, what, in your mind, when is it appropriate for me to win at something? Well, usually, if I'm like, I'm not going to just turn up. Mm. Like, if you're over there doing something, I'm not just going to walk over and be like, you better not be winning over here. Right. Because that's just, that's too intrusive. That's like, okay. I had no place here. Yeah, yeah, not in real time, but you can look at a th- situation and go, oh, fuck, he's winning. I don't like that. Okay. Do, the, uh, do those situations happen? Do you win often? Well, I don't view life that way. Right. So I, I'm trying to get inside your mind here. Okay. I don't see life as winning and losing. Right. But you obviously do. So what, what is winning then? What is someone winning to you? Well, the fact that my your opinion is now my opinion. Is, and that's not something to be celebrated in the context of, oh, look, we have the same opinion. Well, how can I be sure, Mutual... it's, my, how can I be sure it's my opinion? Because it's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't until right this moment. You know when we were watching the film? Yes. Films? Yes. Was I turning to you and going, see, look, that's why this is a better film. See, look at it. Like, look at that thing. Was I? I was, as the film was going on, I wasn't, like, foisting that on you. You didn't start that, as far as I remember. Once it had been started, you did. What do you mean? Because we were talking about, like, oh, look, fear. Yeah, but I wasn't going... And I was like, oh, look, there's, there's Batman's gauntlets on Ra's al Ghul. They're setting that up. Yeah. And then you were doing the same. Where you were like, oh, look, it's blah, blah, blah. Should I not have done that? No, I'm not saying you shouldn't have. I'm, I'm just saying that did happen. Yeah, but that, that was just us, as we always do, talking when we're watching something. Yes. Oh, look, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Do, do you think so I was, you were doing that? Do you think I was doing that to try and foist an opinion on you? No, no, no but you, do you were doing are you that. so weak minded that I could have done that? No, right? Then what's what are you worried about then? Well, I'm just it's making... obviously your opinion then, isn't it? But that's what I wanted to be sure of. <laughs> okay, yeah, but that it wasn't my opinion. Yes, but you've just said you know that you're not weak minded enough for that to work. Yes, so I could just foist my opinion onto you. Yes, but I had to be sure. How how does how do you make sure of that? I interrogate it. You don't interrogate anything. <laughs> I interrogate you it. You don't. But that requires time. Time which you were not giving me by just at the end of the film going like, right, to give me the order. I didn't do that though, did I? Or what did you say? I what were the exact words you used, Sam? I think it was pretty much delivered like this, more or less with this phrasing. So, George, your opinion changed? And I'm just supposed to be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if your opinion has changed. Well, that's, yes. that's exactly what you want, isn't it? What do you mean? <laughs> Should we actually just finish that anecdote? Well, Because we never even told the fucking anecdote. <laughs> I think we basically did, didn't we? No, we didn't. We just said that I asked you and you felt under pressure. We didn't actually oh, explain right. what Oh, right, yeah. So I didn't, so I didn't give you an answer straight away. Yeah. And no matter how hard you pried... Yeah. 
I, I refused to. Yes. To the point where you genuinely just had to sit on my chest. Yeah. To, to get me to submit. Yeah. To saying the thing. Yeah. And that was born out of, you said, if I, at the time, yeah. if I say it, you've won. Yes. And I pretty much said what I've said today, which is, what are you talking about? Okay. And I said, I can't let this go because I know the way you're seeing it mm. is you win or you lose. Yeah. I don't see it that way. So it's not like, oh no, I must win. Mm. But if I if I let you get away with it, mm. in your mind, you'll have won something. And I couldn't allow that to happen. Yes. So that's why I had to get you to say it. Yes. To break you out of that whatever it see is. See the, 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 the um, I don't know. I've lost this. <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore, Sam. Okay. Right. Basically, I asked you, as soon as The Dark Knight Rises ended... Mm. Has your opinion changed? Yes. Expecting you to go, yeah, it has. And then we would share in our appreciation mm. of those films. Mm. Instead, you just didn't say you weren't doing anything. Yeah. It's like, why is this happening now? Mm. And then, as ever, it became clear to me that you were doing a Jordan. Right. And then you said to me, if I agree with you, you win. Mm. And then the reason I couldn't let it go is because you were thinking that way. Right. So even though you then did eventually a seed mm. and say, yeah, it, it, the Dark Knight and then Batman begins and then the Dark Knight rises. When you said that, I did not feel as though I'd won anything. Okay. There was no sense of victory. But I felt like I lost. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to get to the heart of. Okay. Why? I s- Why are you doing this, Sam? Because <laughs> you brought, because you said, have we recounted the anecdote? And here we are, half an hour later. Yes, we are. Yeah. it's half an hour. When will you learn that I, I, I say, I, I, I say <laughs> things right without planning, without just like you know, yeah. Here is a thing to say in this argument. Yeah, and if it goes on long enough, which this most certainly has, yes, they start to collapse in on themselves. <laughs> These past five minutes, we have just been witnessing. Yeah. And the audience has just been hearing collapse in motion. Right. And you, here you are, just like stamping on the ashes. But why did stamping we... Stamping on the debris. But why did we ever have to be here in the first place? I don't know. Jordan. You just kept going. No, because you just won't be normal. <laughs> I don't I don't know why we... End, I don't know why I had to end up sitting on you and hitting you to get Nor you to admit... Nor do I. To get I, you I to admit your, very rude, to get, quite frankly. To get you to admit your actual opinion. <laughs> why do you drive me to these states? Why do you do it? I don't know. That's something now, here's you, the thing. You need to consult yourself. No, 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 no. On my side of it, mm. okay, maybe a, a, your average person would just let it go and not let it bother them. Yeah. I can't do that, mm. right? It's not about winning and losing, but I can't just let something go on principle. Mm. I have to like, no, no, no. You have the wrong idea about this. You've got the wrong mindset and that needs to be get, gotten rid of. Okay. And maybe that's a character flaw. Right. Maybe that's a character defect. I take a bit of responsibility, but I don't know why you contrive these situations in the first place. Why do you do it? Well, you did it, you did it today on the podcast. <laughs> you did it for Batman Begins. You do it all the time. Well, you you, you kept, did it with the gingerbread man. You, you do it all the time. You keep asking me why my life has no meaning. I'm not asking you why your life has no meaning. Oh, you know, you're telling me my life has no meaning. No, no, I'm, I'm asking you what you thought, what you think is missing from your life. Okay. Because it's a very obvious thing that you are, as am I. Right. And I just wanted you to say it. Okay. But then I realized we were entering a territory where this is happening again. <laughs> where you're just not going to say it. No. For some reason. No. I don't know what that reason is. Because I felt cornered. Why? Because you were just like, oh, Jordan, hello, personal question, go. Yeah, this is a podcast. Yeah. Well, where else? No, that's fine. But like, <laughs> give me a minute, you know? What do you want me, what should I have done? I don't know. Not what you did. Right. Because look what's happened. Look what you've done. No, this is what you do. If you just answered questions. Yeah. It'd be fine. You've done this, not me. Mm. You've caused this to happen. You always cause this to happen. I don't know. Because it's always the same bullshit as well. It's like, oh, George, what do you think of this thing? And you refuse to say it. Mm. It agitates me. And as you know, it does. Yeah. I think that's half of the enjoyment for you. And then I try and get you to say it. You won't say it. And then eventually you say, I can't say it now. Too much time has passed. It would be an anticlimax. Mm. Do you see how mental that is? <laughs> how so, utterly... Uh, psychologically fucked up that is yeah do you do you actually comprehend that well is it more fucked up than someone who who will willingly allow themselves to be pulled into such a uh a, a web 
I'm not saying that that person is without flaw, but less so than the person creating the situation in the first place. It depends, though, on why let the me just person ask you that, let me just, is creating that situation. Let me just it? ask you... Right, yes. So, you should know. Okay. Why do you create those situations? The problem here, Sam, yeah. is that if I diagnose... <laughs> it'll, it'll have to stop. Yes. Yeah, please. Do you want it to stop? I really do. I don't. No. Why? Why do, at least tell me why you don't want it to stop. No, because that's part of like the reason why I can't tell you. Because if I tell you, then it's like, well, if I do it again, he's going to know why. Are there reasons? Assume there are. Are there? Tell, tell me that at least. No, don't. You, this is all like, explaining it. I can't do that. No, no, no. Are there reasons? Just, yes. You have your reasons for doing this? Yes. I've got to know now. <laughs> I've got to know now. No. Or are you just doing it again? No, I'm not doing is it Is it again. like Ouroboric? <laughs> the reason you do it becomes itself. Like, like, I just, <laughs> whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You just yeah. Okay. You're trying to shatter your way out of this loop. Right. Okay. You do these things. Yes. I'm, I'll ask you the question. You don't have to answer it. Okay. Do you do it only to wind me up? I plead the fifth. Right. If that's the case, mm. then you are a genius. Okay. Right? Like a trolling genius. I've never disputed that. Mm. I know you have you do have those powers. Mm. If it's nothing more than that, we can let it drop. Though I do have questions. <laughs> okay. But if it's like, oh no, it's because it winds Sam up. Mm. I get it, kind of. Right. If there's more than that, it needs to be diagnosed. Okay. And medicated. Right. Pro- probably. Okay. But I've said that now, but it, and it's given you an out. But I'll just ask you, and in the spirit of friendship, I want a truthful answer. Right. Is Are there other reasons than just winding me up? How dare you evoke friendship? <laughs> yeah, I'm evoking it. Right. I'm playing you the friend friendship, card. yeah. Um, well, if it was just to wind you up, yeah. then doing it to other people would give me no pleasure. We don't really do it to other people. Well, I don't really see other people. No, there, there is that. But you don't do it to other people, really. I have done. Who? Whom? To whom have you done it? Again, with the quantifications. That's not a quantification. Well, you're asking for specific things. Yeah. You, well, you can't, you can't quantify the exact pe- people you've done this to. No. Right. Well, not least because we're on a podcast and I can't just be like, oh, this person. Oh, uh, fine. Okay. Well, you can code it. Well, you should know who these people are anyway. The, the, our friends. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you've done it. I haven't seen you really do it to anybody else. Okay. I mean, maybe it's true that most people don't let themselves get as upset about it as I do. <laughs> Possibly. Let me just ask you this question then. Okay. Is me being wound up that entertaining? I plead the fifth. Okay. I I, I need to know. <laughs> I, have, I have questions, Jordan. <laughs> all right. Okay. Let's just end all we this. We can't keep this going. No, no. Let's end all... Well, we could is the problem. Yeah. Let's end all this just by saying... This, this, has this been the most nebulous conversation we've ever had? I, Nothing happened in that conversation. No. Nothing concrete. There was no pictures or images. <laughs> it just words were being said. There was... Hidden within there was an anecdote, which yeah. we ended up just kind of brushing over. Yeah. It was like, oh, that's... Yeah, that just... That happened. Yeah, no, that, that was an acidy conversation. Like, yes. J- j- having had acidy conversations. Yeah. It had that component to it. I just want to come back to... Obviously, we started this off because I asked you what the meaning of life was and blah, blah, well, blah. Well, you blah, asked blah. me how it was. That's how, how, how we really like, started. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then it just kind of, ballo- yeah, to fill time and it ballooned. Yeah. I just want to n- tie up all the loose ends. Okay. When I was saying, what's the thing that's missing from your life? Mm. Woman, girlfriend, yes. relationship. Yes. That was the obvious thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't because I was trying to <laughs> embarrass, because I'm in exactly the same boat. No. I wasn't trying to embarrass you or whatever. It was just, let's try and get Jordan to be reflective here yes and 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 come to the point of like you know just being okay is not okay mm. like you should be looking for the other stuff that was sort of the the point of that right? okay like may, maybe you you're not as okay as you think you are okay but again that wasn't my agenda no it just happened it developed no. but yeah so, and then that just spiraled because like right he's, he knows what i'm talking about mm. he's not going to say it mm. why is he not saying it mm. He knows I know why he's not saying... You know what I mean? That yeah. whole thing. 
But yeah, that's what it was, is the, the relationship thing. Okay. I just don't know why you refuse to say it, well, part other it, than your Jordan Danian reasons. Well, part of it was just the ambiguity of the traje- trajectory of the conversation. Right. Because it was not planned, I didn't know where it was going. Okay. I didn't know. Right. It's like, right, if I keep answering his questions, yeah. I don't know where this is going to end up. I didn't know either. Yes, and I don't want it to veer into territory too personal. Okay. Because I don't know what I'm fully willing to reveal on the podcast. Okay. So that's where it's kind of like, right, let's stop this. Right. But no, he keeps pushing. Okay. So now I have to throw up the the smoke and the webs and all that. Yeah. Well, you do need to be pushed sometimes. That's the thing. Okay. You do need to be pushed sometimes. Everyone needs to be pushed sometimes. No, of course, yeah. But I'm, I'm, unfortunately, Jordan, I am God's elect as far as pushing you is concerned. (laughs) Right. I'm the one that has to do it. Okay. Aren't I? If you say so. You've got your parents that are like, oh, get a job, all that. Mm. And then you've got me for everything else. Right. Which is, George, why don't you just fucking think about that for a second? <laughs> why don't you try not doing that thing? Okay. Right? Sure. Is, is that not my role? If you think so. Do you think so? Well, it's not for me to say, is it? I don't know. Yeah, I suppose it is for you to say. Is it? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> This is going to fall back into something here. <laughs> okay. All right. Should we do a film review? Okay. <laughs> okay. Which film do you want to talk about, Sam? Uh, no Madland. Okay. All right. An allegory for the conversation. Is it? That we just, well, in terms of being a nomad. Yeah. I, I would say there's another film on here that maybe is more of a... <laughs> yeah, okay. More of an appropriate allegory. Sorry. But just by title, I suppose, No Madland. Okay. Okay. What did you think of Nomadland? Well, yeah, so Nomadland, um, a couple of episodes ago, you were talking about Nomadland and Minari, because we were talking about the Oscars. Yeah. And obviously they got a lot of attention, so you said you went back and revisited them. I did. It's been a while since you'd seen them. And Minari was getting better for you, and Nomadland was not moving. Yeah. Um, we reviewed Minari on the last one. We did. I think it was. Yeah. I think my, my general cons- uh, opinion was... You almost, you slipped up then. Was. You, uh, there was a Freudian slip. You corrected yourself at the last minute and you just gave away the whole game of who Jordan is. What? Because you said, my conce- my opinion was, you're schizophrenic, aren't you? What? You're schizophrenic. What, what, hang on, what, did, I, what did I not say? What consensus, did I say? you were going to say. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> there's, a, there's a parliament of Jordans in there, isn't there? That's what, okay. General consensus is a phrase. It's yeah, a- but like amongst people, not w- within one. What's my general hence, consensus? Hence my correction. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Go on. Okay. All right. Yeah, my general opinion was that Minari is sort of a neutral presence. There are things I like about it, but yeah. most of them can be attributed to the context in which the film exists. Yeah, the landscape in, on which it Yeah, lays, exactly, yeah. yeah. Like the film is, itself is fine, but, you know, yeah. um, the things I like most about it... If it had come out 10 years ago, yeah. they wouldn't have mattered as much. Yes. Yeah. In, in a less polit- politically charged time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It so, would be middle of the road. Yes. Uh, now we come to Nomadland, which yeah. I also see as a neutral presence. Right. But I hated it a lot more than I hate like, than Minari. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I hated it more than I hate Minari. I hate this more than Minari. Well, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But I don't get it. Yeah. I really don't get it. Like, like we are, vo- you know, rare voices of dissent as far as this film goes. Because obviously, overwhelming critical praise. I mean, this award, it hold, it, this award, this film holds the same award as Parasite. Yeah. Like, like, a year I, after yeah, I don't, Parasite came out. I know. I, I don't, I kind of don't want to use that just because any given year, weaker film is better. For, no, of know, course not. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But Parasite... I think we've got to remove Parasite from all comparisons in a way. Because like, I was here, I've been listening to old Kermode reviews, mm. and their rule is if a film uh, has a poster on the side of a bus, mm. it's going to be a rubbish film. Okay. But Shaun of the Dead is the exception. They say it's the exception that proves the rule. Right. And I feel like we can't use Parasite because it's a once in a lifetime almost film. No, and that, that's completely fair enough. Yeah. I think, I what think was the year before? Green Book, was it? Yeah, Green Book. Okay. Well, that's closer to Nomadland than, yeah. than pa- Parasite is. No, I think I. Th- yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah, I just I bring up Parasite just because of like a, um, just like the the, the the discrepancy in terms of like Parasite was undoubtedly unequivocally the best film that came out that year. Yeah, there was nothing else. It was that. I mean, again, it is opinion ultimately. It's but opinion, like it was but pretty much the opinion of most yeah people who saw it. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I feel like generally. 
if people do not have a positive opinion towards parasites, it's they should t- be shot. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It's typically it's somebody who doesn't really indulge in yeah, yeah. Uh, well, foreign cinema. Or I, like, and I think, you know. like in the annals of history, as for, like usually, oh, what was the best film of that year? Mm. There are films that always bob to the top. Yeah. But I think everyone, as far as empirical truth goes, in, in critical circles, mm. Parasite is going to be the best film of 2019. Yeah, absolutely. In you know, in the history books, basically. Yeah, and, and I mean, this was a weird year for films anyway. It was not the strongest yeah. year because a lot of the strong contenders have been delayed. They've been pushed back to yeah. 2021. And the Oscars have got it wrong before. You go back to like oh, yeah. the 60s and the 50s and like uh, films, classic films, cult films, films that everybody knows. Yeah. They were either nominated and didn't win or didn't even get a nod at yeah. the Oscars. Well, hindsight, 2020 and all Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think the point that I'm just making is that, like, this is, for me, just so not yeah. the best film of yeah. 2020. Yeah. So for it to be recognised as such, it's just strange to me. Yeah. Because there, there must be something that I'm missing. Well, you said you hated it. Yeah. So why... Do- do you want to give a brief description of what the film is? I don't know how many... Uh, <laughs> well, this, I, this in part uh, ties into what I disliked about it. <laughs> the plot is Francis McDormand lives in a van. Yeah. That's the plot. Be, be a bit more generous. No. You, you refuse to. No. <laughs> You've got to give the film its due. No. You've got to steel man it before you no. straw it. All right, she lives in a van and drives around a bit. Yeah, after the recession. After the recession. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a text, the screen at the beginning. Um, is this real? Or is this like an invention of the film? No, no, it's real. Okay, the yeah. fall of empire yeah. in Arizona? Yeah. Yeah, there's a town in, I think Arizona, maybe somewhere else. There's the Midwest, the Southwest. Arizona. I think that's Southwest. South. Yeah. Because there's like a specific part of America that she travels around. <sighs> The Midwest, mainly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's, there's a place in America yeah. where this town called Empire once stood, and it was an industrial town. Yeah. And then after the Great Recession, the town basically collapsed. Mm-hmm. Everyone went out of business, people were moving away, and eventually they just basically dissolved that postcode. Yeah. Empire literally ceased to exist. Yes. Um, as a result, most of its residents were forced out of the town. And just a little digression. I know there's the TV show Empire. Hmm. But isn't Empire the name of this film? Not just it's the mitigating circumstances, yeah. but it's about the American Empire. It's about yeah. traveling around the Empire. And the irony of the subject of this film. Exactly. And yeah. I know the book on which it's based is called Nomad Land. Yeah. But it is quite a thing. It's quite a silly title, really, isn't it? Nomad Land. It's like. Well, you want to say No Man Land. Or no you do. Man's Land. Yeah, so that's part of it, isn't it? Yeah. Nomad Land. It's a bit like. Eh. It's, it's just not the film. It, it's That's not the title of this film, I don't mm. think. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I know. I, yeah, I do take your point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the town ceased to exist, so a lot of its residents get thrust out into the into the wilderness. And we, we, we meet up with Frances McDormand. She is living in a van. Yeah. Her husband is gone. Yeah. Dead. His husband is dead. Yeah. Daughter's dead? Does she have a daughter? I don't know. Okay. I missed that, if that was a thing. I don't know. She's looking at pictures of a kid at some point. I don't know if it's somebody else's or not. Is it a niece or something? Or maybe a niece. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Point is, she's got literally nothing left. Yeah. And she's moving around from place to place, picking up odd jobs to yeah. get a bit of cash here and there. She works on Amazon when she's in town. Yeah. She works in a in a uh, fast food restaurant when she's in a different town. Moves all over the place. Yeah. And she's sort of through somebody she meets, I think. Mm-hmm. This might be something that's existed before the film or just something that happens in the film. But she's introduced to... Um, this event, this like community yeah. of nomads yeah. who travel around in vans and they all meet up and they um, exchange pleasantries and all yeah, that sort yeah. of stuff. And then uh, she sees a few of them every now and again. Yeah, they see each other down the road. Down right? the road, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I didn't like it. I don't know what you want me to say. Well, why didn't you like it? I just, what, what was the point? You know? <sighs> I, I did, this is the thing. I, don't, I didn't want to come across as like a, you know, oh, nothing happened and shit. Yeah. But what happened? Really, what happened? Okay, well, it's... It's a very meditative film, mm. which is a euphemism for nothing really happens. Yeah. A lot of her just against Vista's thinking... Yes. ...about stuff. Like, you know, there is stuff about her family and... 
sense of dislocation, obviously, and mm. you know, there, there's a thing toward the end where she she meets up with her sister, and her sister says to her, "Oh, you know, you were always outspoken. Basically, you've, you've always been a nomad. Essentially, was the right. idea, right? Like that was in you all along. Okay. And then at the very end of the film, there's not even no point saying spoiler warning because nothing happens. Yeah. But she goes back to the old house she lived in an empire." Isn't there for a second and then just walks back out into the... Yeah, like, like, oh, she'll just keep traveling. She's, that's her. That's who she is. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like it. And I, it's overwhelming praise and the fact that it's won everything. Mm. And Chloe Zhao is the most, the most garlanded director in the history of award ceremonies. Yeah. She's won more awards than anybody. Listen, I, I want to qualify. It's by no means a bad film. No, we've had this conversation yeah. loads of times, yeah. haven't we? Once you get above a certain level, I, I'm, films cease to be bad. I'm not. I'm not just talking about technically. Yeah, it's not bad. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a bad film. No, but the emperor has no clothes. Is my general opinion of this film. Okay, you, do you know what that is? The emperor's new clothes and all that. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. I, just, I don't know what that means in this context. Oh, well, everyone's saying it's a masterpiece, and I don't. I, I'm, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, right. I'm looking at it and going, trying because I've watched it three times. Mm. I watched it a long time ago then I watched it after the Oscars and I tried to rewatch it a few times for this episode yeah and I finally managed it okay um, trying to convince myself that it was a brilliant masterpiece mm. that I just wasn't understanding right and they're all right they're all wrong and we are right frankly <laughs> it's it's just boring it's, it's boring and I know that's going to come across as like um, oh, you uncultured swine. Mm. What? It's not an action movie. No, I, stuff needs to happen. I need to be engaged, invested. It's fucking boring. Yeah. The Terrence Malick is heavy with this film. Now, Terrence Malick has made some great films. Mm. Badlands, Days of Heaven, The Tree of Life is hit and miss. Everything he's made since then has been utter wank. Right. And this film isn't utter wank. It's not as pretentious as those films. Mm. But... Having a camera at a low angle, tracking behind someone walking through beautiful scenery, does not a film make. No. That's my problem with Nomadland. Yeah. Uh, you know, or oh, cinematography, this. Yeah. You'd have to try for it to be rubbish. Yeah. Uh, like, I think there's at least four scenes that were shot at Golden Hour. Right. You know, just yeah, the yeah. sun's about going Yeah, that kind of, and um, the time The Revenant was filmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, perfect photography hour, basically. Yeah. And you can see, like, four or five, it's on the, the horizon, the sun's about to go down. It's like, well, it's just cheating. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. No. Is the, that part of it? Wasn't there, like, oh, there were only six people who, like... Yeah, very, very small crew. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you don't need anyone. You, yeah, exactly. You don't need She's anyone. She's not even... It like, could have been a bloke on a go with a GoPro, or, like... Yeah, uh, his, like, you're not phone. shooting sound. A lot of that can be ADR. Yeah. But you don't need lighting. Yeah. What do you need, other than a cameraman? Yeah, exactly. There's something as well about... I know a lot of the people in the film are real nomads. Mm. There's something... I noticed that. 95% of the characters mm. in the film use their real names. Do they? Okay. If, they, if you look at the credits, most right. of the cast, okay. it's just their real names. Yeah, it feels more like a... I don't know, what, what would the right word be? <laughs> almost like a Hands Across America thing than a film. Where it's like... It's, it's almost a documentary. Yeah. Let's like get all these real people in and like show... The love and the warmth. And there's actually, yeah, there's like moments where she's talking to those characters. Yeah. And it's not necessarily filmed like a documentary. Yeah. But like the delivery, the way that they're uh, delivering their lines. Yeah. It feels so like uh, verite, like this yeah. is a real person. Vox pop, basically. This isn't a person acting. This isn't even a person trying to act. This is just a person, a person. talking. Yeah, there, there are a few scenes where she's just listening to someone give what I would bet my life on are real anecdotes. Yeah. About the, you know, and that's, yeah, it's going for that documentary kind of feel. Mm. There's something about, though, non-performers in naturalistic American cinema that really winds me up. Okay. The way they speak, it just, I, this is just a personal thing, but mm. it fucks me. Like when she's in Amazon in the beginning and that woman's like, oh, these are the lyrics I've got tattooed on my arm. And oh, yeah. She's like, oh, shut up. Just yeah. shut the fuck up. And it's not what she's saying, it's how she's saying it. Yeah. You know, I, like, this is a note that I wrote. Yeah. Um like I think like 10 minutes into the film and I think it pretty much ended up staying relevant to yeah. me and that was that it's the film almost feels like well, I think the main problem with the film for me anyway I'm yeah. not saying this is an objective fa uh, fault with the film I don't feel like the film took the time to endear itself to me right it just assumed that I was interested from the start okay it's it felt like someone who's really interested in a subject mm. 
talking to you about it in a level of detail that only someone who's as into it as them can appreciate. Yeah, it hasn't won you over. No, yeah. it's like, like if you're talking to someone and they're, they're talking about a subject like this, oh yeah, there are these nomads, they live out mm. in the wilderness and there's this, this one guy, he has these tattoos and it's like, like if you're actually in a situation with that person, yeah. the passion with which they speak can often win you over even if the actual subject doesn't. Yes. But the film is so cold mm. in its presentation. Scenes just start and end. Yeah. There's like, What's the um, the Jason Bourne guy? The director? No, no, no. Well, the da- David, whatever he's called. The David, the Jason Bourne guy? Yeah, he's named Jason Bourne. Actor? Yeah, the actor. The one, the, like, her love interest. Oh, right. Uh, he's in Ultimatum. Uh, yeah. David Strathin. David Strathin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's, a, there's, there's a scene where, like, Frances McDormand's in her van, and he's mm. in the bed with a the thermometer in his mouth. Yeah. She looks at the thermometer. Next shot is her in the hospital yeah. having a doctor tell her Oh, he had to go in for surgery. Yeah. And she's like, surgery? And then the next shot is her giving him snacks post-op. Yeah. And then it's just a different scene. It's the, it's it's the, the, what, what was that? What, yeah, it's like that fly-on-the-wall montage Yeah. naturalistic thing. Like, if the idea is just... If the idea of the film is like, oh, we're just going to show you the the mechanics of that lifestyle. Yeah. Because, like, there's, there's the scene, isn't there, where she's... Um, where the van stops working. Yeah. And she takes it to a garage and she doesn't have the money. So she has to, like, commute to her sister's house yeah. where she gives her the money to go get the van. Like, things like that. If it's just basically, like, outlining the nomad life. Mm. Okay, at least it's something. Yeah, well, that's what it is, really. It's supposed to be a slice of life, isn't it? But that scene... Yeah. It doesn't tell me anything. Because his... No. Sur- it's not like later in the film oh, complications from the surgery. Mm. I'm going to die, Francis McDormand. Oh, no, but you're the only person in mm. this life that I, I've cared for. Mm. And it's not as if the fact that he had surgery without any warning mm. has thrown them into massive debt. And so they have to take more extreme measures yeah. to pay for it. It just happens. You've got to remember, though, that this is based on a, a non-fiction book. So there's only they, there's only so many dramatic liberties they can take. I'm not excusing it. No, no. Because the film still has to be not boring. Yeah. But I think the reason it does that that it, it just cuts right, kind of almost randomly, and mm. there's this bit of a scene in this bit. Yeah. It's because it's trying not to sentimentalize. It's trying not to be a movie about it. Yeah. It's trying to be a documentary basically that has actors in it and kind of okay. Ca- it captures the truth, the reality of it. Well, then why not make it a documentary? There is that. But that's not um, like, a, oh, it should be a doc. Just yeah. like it's a genuine, yeah, why, why did you, why why did you think a, a fiction film over a documentary yeah. would be more suitable? Yeah. Because you can really, if these are real people anyway, yeah. you can really ask them questions. You can really explore what they, really listen to what they have to say rather than having to like force them into this uh, narrative with yeah. this Frances McDormand character. Yeah, because as narrative invention goes, it's not like she's a strong enough character to justify it. There's she's like, another, another one. Yeah, I don't know if this is uh, like a quote that I brought up on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. I listen to Zero Punctuation. He does video game reviews every right. week. And there's a piece of writing advice that he often brings up in the videos mm. if he's not a particular fan of the story. Mm-hmm. And that is, it was a piece of writing advice that was given to him. And that was, is this the most important point in your character's life? Mm. And if not, why aren't you showing us that? Right. If this film is the most interesting point in Fern's life, mm. she is not a character worthy of having her story told, frankly. Okay, okay. See, I, I don't really... I mean, yeah, generally speaking, not is it the most important point of their lives. That's a bit silly and reductive. Mm. But the question, why am I telling it... Why am I showing this point of her life? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that was something we were taught as well. Ask, yeah. why, why are you starting your story now? Yeah. What is it about now and I'm okay with it. It doesn't have to be the most important, but you have to no. have a good reason for showing it now. Yeah. Because um, like, you think, like, if you're just like, oh, yeah, this woman, like, she lived in a town which, like, after the Great Recession, it basically collapsed in on itself, and that yeah. postcode has been completely dissolved. It literally doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, here's two hours of her in a van. No, mm. no, no. Mm. Tell me about the town. Yeah. That's, like, like the impulse, right? I, yes, but I, I think the film is deliberately rejecting that impulse. Okay. Because, yeah, you could, the first act is her and her husband in the house. Yeah. And then the, the, the inciting incident is that they lose the house, he dies. Yeah. And then cut to six months later, you know, whatever. Mm. I think it's trying to not be a film in that way. Okay. You know what I mean? To its detriment. That's the thing. Like, it, it's trying to be as down to earth as it can be. Yes. And life is episodic and it doesn't, well, it does and it doesn't, but you have those like rigid 
that rigid structure. Yeah. It is just people going somewhere and then going somewhere else with a bit of profundity peppered in. Then they move on, they do that. So yeah. I don't begrudge it too much, mm. but it's still got to be not boring. Yeah. And like, if you want your film to be raw and yeah. real, okay. Mm-hmm. But it is still, a, yeah, it's still a film. Yeah, it's still a film. I don't want my film to feel like a film, but it is a film. Yeah. It, but it is a film. It yeah. is a film. No, yeah. that's the thing. Uh, you know, I, I at the risk of just sounding like a complete trog, that, that my biggest criticism is ignoring all the fancy, you know, artsy fartsy. Here's why it didn't quite work. It's boring. It is boring. It just didn't grip me. It's very boring. I don't know if this is the best comparison in the world, but Naked, for example, right? Taken Naked. Mm. That's a film about a guy just existing. Really, isn't it? But it's it's about the dialogue, isn't it? It's the richness of No, the, but this yeah. is my point. Like he is it like if you actually look at the, the plot as mm. it is of that film, he turns up in Manchester one. Oh no, he came from Manchester. He comes from Manchester, yeah. He turns up in London. London. Yeah. Turns up in London. Mm-hmm. Um and it's, it, he spends the night in London talking to various people. Yeah. And he 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 espouses what he thinks about certain things. They react accordingly mm-hmm. or unaccordingly or whatever. Like, that is just a film of people talking. It's just a, a guy, he is a nomad. He's just kind of wandering the right. land. But it's interesting. Yeah. He has interesting things to say. He mm-hmm. has interesting perspectives. They Those scenes, though ultimately episodic, they're all interesting. They're, they're fascinating. They're fascinating. And it's a gripping performance. It's a gripping performance. Fern is just a person. Fern, last thing, Francis McDormand does like I got does being normal well in the it never felt like a movie star. No, no, it did feel like a real person. Yeah, but yeah, nothing kind of yeah, not not engaging certainly. Just looking at just looking at her yeah. as she goes about doing stuff she, as she takes a shit in a field. takes a shit in a bucket and then that, that, like when I saw that I was like oh, all right yeah. That's that's usually a way to get attention at awards. Well, that was the, just portray a woman unflattering unflattering. Yeah, short hair, no makeup, and like. Shitting yeah, because she, she sits in the field and then uh, the title card comes up. Yeah. So it is like, this is our mission statement. Yeah. And that's fine. That that clearly is what they're... For what it's trying to do, it succeeds. Mm. It's just not something that interests me. No. But I can't say it's not successful because, you know, a lot of people love it and wh- whatever. Yeah. But I personally, yeah, don't understand No, it. like, okay, yeah, it's successful. It's yeah. a film for you. It's not a film for me. Right. Ultimately. Yeah, and like I said, it's not a bad film. It's just an overrated one. Mm. At, the, at the least, it's overrated. Yeah. It is not a Best Picture winner. No. And a Best Actress. Such a boring choice for Best Actress. It really is. Like, that's kind of, Oh, no. And there's one bit where there's a dog in it at one point. She leaves the dog. Well, that's the thing. Not the, the dog David Strathairn has. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. No, in the... Okay. In the beginning. In the yeah. beginning. Yeah, there are a couple of dogs. She leaves a dog behind. Yeah, she doesn't want it. Tied to a yeah. table. And we're supposed to like this character? I know, yeah. Uh, but when it's... she goes to Strathin's house, um, he has a dog. Mm. And there's a scene where she's calling to her, like, oh, come on. And the dog's supposed to run over to her and yeah. it just lies down. It's like, good. The dog has contempt for the film. He's <laughs> it's not going to do what he's told. I'm too good for this shit. But that would be a good example of what the film is doing, right? Like that scene called for the dog to just run over to her, mm. but just lay down. You hear Strathin laughing. Ha, look, the dog's done that. Because it's ver- verisimilitude. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be it's real. Real. It's got to so have a veracity real. about yeah. it. So, like, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like an utter lack of momentum. Yeah. It doesn't feel like, yeah, it, it's not even like, oh, it feels like we are building to, it's like, oh, eventually she's going to return to the town or oh, she won't be able to maintain this lifestyle. Yeah. No, there's no momentum. Yeah. At all. I Like, granted, the characters within the story don't have any momentum. Mm-hmm. Well. Not really. Well, they do, literally. Like, they drive they a van. But, like, in terms yeah. of just, like, being. Yeah. Like, the whole point is, like, oh, we're, um, yeah, we, we've fallen out of, we've been spat out. We're off the grid. We're off the yeah. grid. We we earn enough through odd jobs to survive. Yeah. Maintenance of the van. But yeah. we have rejected the uh, the prison of the dollar. There's some of that, yeah. The, yeah. The, the guy spouting off about that and, you know, oh, I didn't want to, my husband died or whatever and he bought this boat and he never took it out of. And then it's supposed to be like a brilliant line where she says, so I bought my boat and my boat is not sitting on my driveway. It's in the desert. Yeah. So it's meant to be like, ooh, yeah, because boats should be in the desert. And yeah. That's really cool. I, I was just thinking, yeah, it's fucking impractical. And it? Like, <laughs> if, you, if you have a boat, why don't you take it to the sea? <laughs> uh, like, I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, these people, frankly, yeah. just wouldn't want to spend any time with them. No. Also, we're, oh, yeah, we're off the grid, man. We rejected the, the capitalism. Like, you have your van. And you poop in it. Yeah. I'll have my, you know, the house with the central heating. And, and the and, internet. And, and the, the internet. You're welcome to it, love. Yeah. 
But the, don't the, trying to romanticize it to me. I am not the right guy to no. do that. Yeah. No, I just yeah. I had no time for any of the characters in the film. No. Or its message as far as insofar as I had one. Um, its tone, its point, its existence. <laughs> All's the big like. I don't hate it, but uh. yeah, yeah. I also do not like yes. No Madlands. <laughs> That's all I gotta say, really. Yeah. About it. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want this to become like a bashing session. Not well, least because it's not <laughs> like it's not. I think we failed then. Well, yes. <laughs> but I don't want it to become one of those things where it's like, oh, and another thing. No. Yeah. That's all there is to say. Because it doesn't. Like, it I, doesn't. It's, it's. I think it deserves it. Okay. But I, I recognize the film does not. Yeah. It. I feel like it wasted my time, but I don't think it's a. Bad, an objectively bad film. It's not a hateful film. No. no, it's not. It's not a loathsome film. No. It's just a boring one. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen the design for the Riddler in the new Batman film? I think I have. Yeah, no. Yeah, I have. Yeah, he's wearing goggles. Black mask. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Goggles, yeah, yeah. It's clearly inspired by uh, Zodiac Killer. Okay. Which is interesting. Okay. Because obviously he's... Oh, yeah, because like Zodiac left clues and shit. Zodiac codes. left codes and clues. Yeah. Um, never caught. Don't know if that says anything. Mm. But yeah, what is it about the Batman mythos that lends itself so re- readily to a variety, diversity of interpretations? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to put my finger on it because you've got the Dark Knight trilogy, mm. big themes. Yes. You know, the economy and chaos, you know, all that yeah, sort of stuff. Fear and... Yeah, yeah right. All that big, kind of stuff. big themes. Then you've got the Lego Batman movie, comedy, mm. you know. Um, and now what looks like a noir seven-like thriller, yeah. right? Batman it's Ninja. Ba- Don't forget Batman Ninja. Uh, so that too, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't successful though, was it? Was it not? Batman Ninja. What? What is that? It was an anime. Oh, an anime? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Okay. But yeah, Batman, he's a ninja. He's a ninja. Well, ninjas. well, he is a ninja, isn't he? Um, yeah. But like the, the proper like ninja up and stuff. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's the most malleable superhero whilst retaining a solid tradition. That's what's so impressive about Batman, isn't yeah. it? And I don't know where that came from because there was once a time where I think like the 60s Batman, the mm. Adam West Batman, the pow, zap, yeah. zop. Good, good work, Robin. That Batman. Yeah, holy blah, blah, Batman. Yeah, yeah, that's Batman. Right. That is Batman. Yeah. Show them a Christopher Nolan film in the 60s. They think it would have, think it absurd. Mm. What is this? This is not Batman. Mm-hmm. But it is Batman. They're all Batman. They're all Batman. They're all equally like, yep, that's Batman. And they don't change the foundational mythology. That's the interesting thing. Yeah. It's it's always those elements every time. I wonder if that's part of it, the fact that it never truly compromises the, what is seen as the core tenets of Batman. But that's what's so interesting about it. That's, that's the paradox, that it lends itself to so many different takes mm. without changing all that much. Yeah. What is that? What mm. is that? Because Superman, what are the core tenets of Superman? That he came from Krypton, yeah. he's an orphan, yeah. raised in, you know, Kansas, and he works at the... Stands for truth, justice, in the American way. Okay. Is, does he? I don't know anymore, to be honest. Well, yeah, may, yeah. They, give yeah, yeah, Tanahisi yeah. Coates a minute, yeah, he'll, he'll it, change yeah. that. And he um, works at the Daily Planet? Is yeah. That, yeah. Lois like, Lane. A lot less, I would say, rigid mythology than Batman. Yeah. In terms of the characters that need to be in it and all these, you know. Mm. And yet, not nearly as wide a breadth in terms of differing portrayals of the character. No. Because, like, most modern Batman interpretations feature the Joker now, yeah. right? Which means that the Joker is kind of as malleable, or has become as malleable. Yeah. Because I was going to say, like, oh, maybe one of, the, one of the things is that Batman has such an extensive rogues gallery, mm. and they frequently... Like, pick any major... But when you get to, like, Firefly and shit mm. like that, it's like, oh, it's the guy. But, like, once if you pick, like, the big players, mm. Joker, Two-Face, Catwoman, uh, you know... Mr. Penguin, Riddler. Penguin, yeah. Mr. Free, Riddler. All of them are like, oh, yeah, they represent a facet of Batman. Yeah. Or they represent the bastardization of that, the yeah, inverse yeah. of that. Yes. Obviously, the Joker is all about chaos and mm-hmm. he kills, complete opposite of Batman. Two Face, it's the duality of mm-hmm. Batman. The fact that he's he's Bruce Wayne and also Batman. Mm-hmm. Catwoman, there's it. It reflects the fact that she, you know, she dressed up as a cat. He dressed up as a bat, right. and they have their own. There is more to it than that, but yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know with all of them, but a lot of them. So. A lot of yeah. yeah, but like you yeah. could find like ah yes, that's that's why they're a good villain to Batman because they represent X and Batman represents Y. Did we talk about this in the podcast before that a, a superhero's villains say a lot about the 
superhero. We must have done. We must have done. Like, you know, I don't know if it's an original observation, but all Spider-Man was created because a mutant spider, whatever, mm. bit him. And so pretty much all of his foes are science, scientific accidents. Yeah. Right? They're in the realm of sci-fi. Yeah. Superman's enemies, usually aliens. Yeah. As he is. Yes. And Batman's enemies are mad because he is. Yes. It, it's to do with insanity. Yeah, and, and they're all, and they're all uh, people, corrupted people. Yeah, yeah. Arkham Asylum, you know, yeah. it's, it's, they're all crazy, basically. Mm. So it's, it does say, is interesting. Like, I, I'm not sure how conscious the writers are of all that stuff. That's the thing, because, like, Batman is the culmination of years and years and years of comic books yeah. and different people and illustrators. And there is obviously, like, a, there, there was a Batman Bible of sorts. Mm. But also, can there be a Batman Bible if, like, like you said, you've got Lego Batman and Dark Knight and... Well, that's the thing. That there, is a, there is a Batman Bible. It, it's like the oral tradition of Batman. Mm. Those things are concrete. His parents were killed. Alfred's the butler. Yeah. His, anim- his biggest enemy is the Joker. Mm. He's helped by Gordon. There are these things that you can't get rid of, you know? Mm. And nor should you try. Yeah. But it's funny, interesting for someone with such like, right, you can't make a Batman film without having Gordon. All right, that's not that. For all those things, it's still got yeah, this really- so malleable. What, it's really interesting. Because yeah, the Joker's been recontextualized. Again, which you'd think, given that he's supposed to represent the antithesis of Batman, mm would be pretty fixed. Yeah. And yes, there have been some unsuccessful interpretations of... Not naming any names. No. But... What's the laugh he does in um, the Snyder Cut? It's basically It's that. just that again, yeah. is it? <laughs> it's a bit more forced. Y- yeah, yeah. And it's like a long pause, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But they seem to be lean on different aspects. I mean, because what's, what's fixed about the Joker... That there's like a dark comedy aspect to him. Yeah, it's not even his lack of context anymore because we've had a no. pretty major adaptation yeah. which contextualizes him. Yeah. But yeah, that kind of perverse, comedic, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. it's a dark joke kind of. Yeah, thing. it's all just a joke. He looks yeah. at it through the through, through the realm of comedy. Yeah. And chaos as well. I suppose his his willingness and indeed glee in embracing chaos. Yeah. Like, what's the, what, the end of Joker? What's the big thing when he's talking to the therapist and she says, like, he's laughing? And she my says, life, I thought my life was a tragedy, but now it's a comedy. And now I realise it's a comedy. Is that what it is? That is a line in the film. Okay. I don't know if it's the final... Like, it's something like, what are you laughing at? He says, you wouldn't get it. Or it's something like that. Oh, yeah, that is yeah, 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 yeah. Which, in that film, is like, oh, that you've done that because it feels like it means something, but the film hasn't uh, right. done it justice. But, yeah, you know... Um, so malleable for such a fixed mythology. Mm. So I just wanted to raise that question, really. Like, what okay. what is it? Well, about? I mean, that's 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 it, right? That's that's peak uh, pop culture property. Yeah, something that is so malleable yet fixed. Yeah, like when whenever you do a thing with Batman, you basically can do what you want, right? So long as you have like a couple of you do a couple of things, mm. but outside of that he's yours to do with what you please. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Like Spider-Man, I think typically there's like a very specific tone mm. you have to hit with Spider-Man. And Superman as well. Like they, they've they done like Superman being evil mm. a few times, but it's never like, um, it's always seen as a bad thing. If yeah. Superman is not good, that's a bad thing. Yeah, dark Superman doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. It really doesn't work. And yeah, like like a like a moody Spider Man or like a, a Spider Man that isn't like famously yes does, does not work. lighthearted or like yeah, you know yeah. he's the fun superhero. If he's not that, then it's a bit like oh, this is really Spider Man. Yes, but like an irreverent teenager. Yeah, is the idea isn't it? But you can do goofy Batman. You can do serious Batman. Yeah, you can do grounded Batman. Mm. I'm trying to like. I know. Yeah, tonally, the Dark Knight trilogy and um, the Matt Reeves mm. films, from what we've seen, because obviously Matt Reeves has not come out yet. Yeah. We've only, really, we've only really got the teaser to go on, yeah. don't we? Tonally, they seem very different. And yeah. the presentation seems very different. And yet, when you're just describing them, you're like, oh, they're both dark, they're both grounded, they're both... Yeah. But they're very different versions of that. Yeah. Which is part of the reason I'm looking forward to it, because I want to see how... I want to be able to quantify mm. how different... Like, what the difference is. I think the difference, from, from what I can gather so far, is that Nolan's films are quite clean mm. obviously the way they're shot but also they're idea movies 
Yeah. And they're character driven, but there are ideas. Well, they're very professional, aren't they're they? They're very professional. Not just whereas, in their execution, but just in their delivery. They're very yeah. professional. Whereas Matt Reeves' as Batman looks a lot more, well, gritty, down and dirty, like yeah. the crunch of the bones and all that. I'm not saying it's not going to be about ideas, mm. but obviously Nolan is a very cerebral filmmaker, yeah. isn't he? It's about how do we express ideas in film. Yeah. And Reeves, it looks like, hopefully, it's going to be more character. Yeah. Of, yeah. Grim he, and dark. Because he is good at that. Like, the Planet of the Apes movies, they're yeah. big, uh, fun-ish blockbuster yeah. movies. But they still, they're still good. They still have characters and ideas. Yeah. and But he's able to kind of fit them into a... a pulpy kind of yeah like an ape dual dual wielding machine guns on a horse Mm. is such a goofy idea but he's managed to create a film where that works where it works yeah yeah Yeah, um i think the reason is this could just be piffle but the batman is so malleable in a way Mm. is because it reflects a genuine psychological complexity it's something that people it's an archetype that obviously works. Nothing lasts that long and is that successful if it's not saying or doing something that resonates okay. with people. Right. You can't get a billion dollar franchise of something that doesn't ring true. Mm. So there's something about the Batman mythos that rings true. And let it be said here, if, if, if you know, as, as, as though it needs to be, he's obviously the best superhero. Mm. Right? Yeah. And he's human. I think that's another part of it. Yes, that, yeah, that's one human. of the things that's so appealing yeah. about him. Yeah. That's all i got for that, really. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, no, even if we haven't sufficiently answered the question, no. I, I would want it, I want it to be a question to be raised. Yeah. Like, why is, how is Batman so malleable and we're all, like, completely okay with that? Yeah. So many times when, when uh, properties are being adapted or they're doing, like, the reboot or whatever... Mm-hmm. There's often talk about like, oh, that's not that. Yeah. You're, you're going outside the realm of... Like, I've even done it with the Sonic film. It's yeah. like, I know you're doing what you think is your version, mm-hmm. but that doesn't feel like it works. That doesn't feel like a... like a Not valid. I don't want to come across mm-hmm. as like the gatekeeper of Sonic right. or anything, okay. but it's, it's not like... It doesn't feel right. Mm. I can't even think of the last time Batman did something that didn't feel right. Well, Affleck... Yeah, I can. I can. I know exactly what that moment was. Right. It was. Um, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah, but that's that's not Batman's fault. That's Affleck. Uh, no, no, no like it's that's, not. That's Zack Snyder's. Uh, well, fault. Batman is, doesn't exist. So yes, it's all. It's obviously whoever's creating it. Yeah. Fault. But because it compromised one of the core thing, Batman doesn't kill people. Right. And that's the thing, yeah, you can do all these different things and, oh yeah, that feels right and that feels right. But if all of a sudden he's going around murdering people, ah, but that's not. Yeah, that's not right. Okay, I know when it's right and I know when it's wrong. Well, that, well, yeah, that that sort yeah. of proves what's so impressive about it, isn't yeah. it? Is that there are rules. Yeah, there, yeah, there's a boundary to this thing. Yeah, it's not just like, oh yeah, Batman is now he's dressed up in pink and he's gonna go over there and he's gonna hand out cookies to yeah to sharks. Like, it's, and, and it's not like you they've done a Batman film that because you know what we're saying right is that it's it's fixed but also. It's clearly a very broad canvas. There's a yeah, lot you could do with it. You've got so much room within it yeah. to move about. But no one's ever done something so far removed. From, you know, when we, when we saw Joker, it was like, it's just a taxi driver ripoff yeah. that they're saying is the Joker. Yeah. No one's ever done a version of Batman that was so far removed from the Batman we know that you've gone, well, you, you're just calling it Batman. Mm. Everything is valid. Even the, the, the Clooney, you know, it's still valid. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a campy over-the-top version of that. But it still was within the parameters of Batman. Yeah. So yet no one's even t- taken it that far afield. Yeah. So, I don't know, I found it really interesting thinking about it. But that's, that's Okay. That. Should we do another film review? Okay. The Father. The Father. The Father. Okay. Yes. This is the one where I was like, surely this is a better analogy for the, the first conversation that because we had. Because it's about dementia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of the father? What did I think of the father? Do you want to do the plot again? What did I think of oh, the no, no, no. <laughs> Jordan's striking me. Is it, is this, was that a Tyrannosaur slap? That's for me. That's, That's for making me watch Anthony Hopkins <laughs> cry. <laughs> I'm going to call that a Tyrannosaur slap from now on. Right. No, no, because it, it lends it like a physical um, dimension to it. Like okay. a, a Tyrannosaur attacking me from above. <laughs> right. But also the film Tyrannosaur. The film Tyrannosaur. <laughs> 
<laughs> which had Olivia Coleman in it. Which it did, yes. She and she cried in that as well, drawn, and that was equally hot. Not as uglily in uh, The Father as she does in Tyrannosaurus. No. Yes. But it's still equally as heartbreaking. It is. The Father is about uh, an elderly man, played by Anthony Hopkins, suffering with dementia. Yes. And he's kind of living or might not be with his daughter and her husband, who may or may not be her husband. And the whole film is filtered through the the perception of the main character who doesn't know whether he's coming or going, basically. Mm. Time seems um, pliant and, and like clay. Things kind of, are happening out of order. Yeah. Characters are changing. Characters are, yeah, literally their like, identities are changing. Yeah. He doesn't know when, where, who he is, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what do you think? It's all right. I'm not gonna, I've, I've slapped you You've now. slapped me. It's done. Yeah, I've got that yeah. out of my system. <laughs> Um, well, I watched this immediately after watching Nomadland. As did I. Um, so when, like, the opening shots happened and yeah. they, they were colours, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, colours. Yeah. I remember those. Like, even though this is yeah. a... Um, well, it's a, a, a theatre adaptation. Yeah, it's a play, it, it, and, it, and you can see that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, Again, not to its detriment. It's not too stagey. But I think had I not known, I would have inferred. Yes. Yeah. Well, it, remi- it reminded me a little bit of the... Um, only because of like the the setting and the setup of it, but yeah. it reminded me of that uh, Mr. Robot episode. Yeah, ex- where exactly. In that apartment, exactly. Because you're yeah. basically in that apartment the entire film. Yes, which it's basically okay, one one isolated location. Very clearly, it's play. It's a play. Yeah, and everything that happens in the film could be pulled off on stage. Yeah. So yes, definitely. But yeah, when she was walking down the streets of London and there was these luscious green trees, and then she was walking up the staircase and there was this, like gorgeous red carpet. Yeah, it's like oh color. <laughs> <laughs> like you can make a film and it look all right, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, bad land. Yeah, fine. Cinematography is good or whatever. But you, I don't know why they felt the need to give it that sort of like muted blue. Yeah. Look to it. Yeah. Bleak. And yeah. Just kind of, uh, yeah. It's like you can just have the colors that are there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my <laughs> first impression. Color. Okay. Color. Things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really like the way that it um, it handles dementia. Yeah. The, like, because you start off with Olivia Coleman going to visit Anthony Hopkins, mm-hmm. and he comes across as you obviously get straight away that you know he's forgetful. And yeah, he he becomes a bit abrasive in that scene, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming the film is very deliberately showing it you uh, showing it to you from Olivia Coleman's perspective, right? Because the very next scene is from Anthony Hopkins' perspective, mm-hmm. and that scene contradicts everything we've already learned. Yeah, she's not moving to Paris as she once claimed. Mm-hmm. It's not his apartment as he once thought it was. There are people living there that he's never met before, mm. but he's apparently known his whole life. Olivia Coleman, his daughter, gets completely recast as a different actress. Yeah. So immediately it's like, this is... Unreliable. Yeah, unreliable. This is dementia. Yeah. Which I think is really... It was a really important thing to do that earlier. Because like I feel like... And I know this is all like based on a play, so this the roadmap was kind of done for mm. them already. But I, I feel like the temptation for some writers would be to go, oh, we'll recast Olivia Colman at the end of the film right. to show the, oh, his dementia's getting worse. Mm. It's like, this is the severity of the situation now. But the fact that they've done it so early, yeah, it really, like, you sympathise with Anthony Hopkins. You, just, you get him. You know why he's so, why he's so aggressive mm. and why he's so, another word. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, why, yeah. Why he's untrusting like of people and, and short-tempered, and why he's like, don't treat me like I'm in, like I'm, you know, a retard. Is what yeah, because he, yeah. he doesn't I, trust anyone. I, th- yeah, I, it's kind of a nice in real world thing, really. The both of the actresses who play his daughter are called Olivia. That's just like an interesting oh, right, nugget. Okay. But um, y- yeah, like obviously, it, it the film is essentially through his perspective, mm. and not because the thing is, given the nature of the condition. Mm. There's no continuity. Yeah. So it's not like you're in his head as he's terrified of this and then confused by that. Because you don't know, you also don't know what's happening. No. So you're, you're kind of experiencing it without being in his head. It's a very interesting... You are, but I think the film does a good job of... Because if it's just if the film is just constantly breaking continuity, yeah. then there is no continuity. No, no, yes. It ceases to mean anything. Like the fact that things are happening out of order and people... It ceases to mean anything because nothing is concrete. Yes. So, so the film so still like, has to establish... Of course, yeah. This is reality so that we know when reality is being broken, quote unquote. Right. It does that less so as it goes on. But yeah, like when... 
uh, his daughter shows up and it's a different actress. Yes, you like him are going home. What? Yeah. Who, who are you? And so, then Mark, yeah, Gatiss is, it, Mark Gatiss is there without introduction. Yes. Like, who are you? It's like, I'm, I've always lived here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course you I really like that. And I, you know, I assume that's obviously the intention of the writer. Mm. But the fact that when we see his daughter, mm. the one who's not played by Olivia Coleman, they as soon as he accepts, like, oh, yeah, of course you're my daughter. Right. They don't change the actress back straight away. No, no, no. It's sort of like to me. It was sort of implying that um, he doesn't. Re- he still doesn't recognize her. Yeah, but he's just going along. with he's it. He's blagging. Yeah, he knows that he's kind of unreliable at that point. And yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You're my daughter. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's so, nice. Like it's, it's, it's good. It's, she's still a stranger to him, but he's just going along with it. Yeah. It, like really adds it. You you really with him. You know. You get yeah. what he's up to. You get where he's coming from. So the, there is that kind of detachment in a way. Like it's filmed in a very objective kind of fashion. Mm even though it's subjective, you know. Yeah. But there's that detachment because when you have dementia, you are detached from yourself. You don't yeah. even know who you are, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. I don't know much about dementia. I'm not like an authority. I can't say, oh yeah, this film really... I don't, I don't think any film can truly capture the experience of dementia, but this feels like it might. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. It's... Even if it... Yeah, even if it doesn't fully capture the nuances of yeah, dementia, yeah. it does a good job of... Because the difficulty is, as is the difficulty mm. for Olivia Colman's character in the film, it's like we can't... He's becoming unmanageable. Mm. And you don't want Anthony Hopkins to ever become the villain. Dementia is the villain. And we can't mistake... Anthony Hopkins cannot become synonymous with mm. the condition. Right. He's the, he's the biggest victim in the film. Yeah, yeah, of course. So you need to be sympathetic with him all the way through. Yes. Even when he's this really abrasive, mm-hmm. unpleasant piece of shit. Not because it's yeah. not his fault. It's it's. Oh yeah, you never you never think that. No, you never are annoyed with him. More, no, no, ever. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like at the end of the day, none of us can attest as to how realistic the depiction is. But the the the, the point is, the film convinced us that it was a, a good depiction. Yeah. Of, right. Yeah. It's all, it's the best he's ever been. Obviously. Yeah. Better absolutely. than Silence of the Lambs, but you know, it is his best performance. <laughs> Would you uh, concur that his son-in-law? is one of the most odious characters in the history of cinema. <laughs> Which one? Well, Rufus Sewell to start with. Yeah. When, when he's like, are you going to, st- how long are you going to stick around being a pain in everybody? And then, yeah. and then Mark Gatiss starts fucking slapping him. Yeah. And you're like, oh man, I don't like this at all. <laughs> but that's the horrible thing, isn't it? Like, because the film has already played with you. Yeah. Up until that point, you're forced to go, is this even happening? Y- yeah. Is he even, is he just misinterpreting? Yeah. Mark Gatiss's innocent questions as aggression, as, uh, as and physical, abuse, yeah, and that's yeah. manifesting as him slapping. I, I was that was kind of my take when I watched it. Is that I don't think this is happening. Why? Well, you she don't walks know. in, then he's kind of you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yes, you don't know, and he's kind of cowering, and the boyfriend's like, I don't know what I've done, and obviously mm. that's what he would be like had he actually done it. Yes. So yes, you are confused, but equally, I don't think it's a film that's to be deciphered. I think that takes away the whole point of it. Yeah. Like, is this real? Is that you kind of don't think in that? You just kind of ride the experience of it, you know. Which, if you had dementia, you kind of have to. Yeah, you're that's a surrender the you have to make. Yeah, uh, which is horrible because you forget the surrender. I would have thought. Yeah, but you, yeah, you have to keep rediscovering and resurrendering to your own mind. It's horrible. Which yeah. is yeah, it's the worst thing. Mm. It's the worst thing. Um, but yeah, it, like any, anyone that does any videos that try to say. Oh, if you look at this scene, this implies this is real because mm. may, just don't. That's not the way to think about it. It's yeah. not a thing to be unlocked. Mm. The experience is the experience. Yeah, and and the fact that it's not immediately apparent, the fact that it needs to be deciphered. Yeah, not well, needs to be, but the fact that if you want to know what's going on, you would have to. De- that's mm. the point, right? Anthony Hopkins has dementia. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't recognize yeah. his daughter sometimes. And by the end of the film, you've cobble together enough of an impression of what's actually happening mm. that it's not you're not totally lost like okay yeah I get his, he had a daughter that passed away and then yeah, yeah she's actually moved to Paris and he's in a yeah by the end of it you have enough sense of, of what's mm. real but yeah the ending it's a bit upsetting isn't it you know I might come back around and slap <laughs> you gonna slap me again are you no I'm no sorry. okay uh, yes yeah well I was expecting yeah. the film to be that Oh, yeah. I'm glad it wasn't that, because that would have been intolerable. (laughs) Yeah. If it was just a a misery fest from start to finish. There's only two real moments like that. Yeah. Most of it, it it is just kind of... It's not pleasant, but it's watchable and it's 
copable withable. Mm. You know. But yeah, there are two moments you're just like, oh god, this is <laughs> fucking horrible, isn't it? Um, yeah. I liked that he kept his accent. He didn't try and really do anything. Yeah, different. Anthony Evans, I think, is the name of the character. Anthony Evans, which yeah. is that too is believable. like a nice. I don't know if that is was the character's name in the play. I wrote it but, off as uh, coincidence. Yeah, yeah, coincidence. But again, a nice kind of in world. The fact that he's actually Anthony. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it helps. It's like they're actually talking to him. Right. Uh, Olivia Coleman, very, very good. Oh yeah, the performance yeah. is a. There's not a weak performance. Yeah, the it's film. the best ensemble of the year so far. Okay. I would say. Would you concur? Well, it's annoying for me because, uh, yeah, it's a yeah. 2020 film. Yeah. And I looked it up and pretty much every 2020 release in 2020 was at a film festival. And my rule is film festivals don't count. Right. It's the the year in which it first became commercially available. Yeah. But theatrically. Shown. Theatrically yeah, yeah. or video on demand or yeah, yeah. DVD. Okay. But I think it came out in Spain like a week before the year ended. See, this is why you can't do it that way. Because what, what if... It's just not rep- there's not enough reportage on it on the internet. What if it, what if one year the film comes out in January? Like, oh, it's a 2021 film. And you find out it was in San Marino last That's, year. That happens. You can't do that. That happens. I missed one cut of the dead there's because of that. Too much admin. Too yeah. much admin to be done. Just go by my method. It's much easier. But if I just go by British release dates, yeah. then you miss you still miss stuff. Or you you get stuff too late. You get stuff later, but at least you manage to see everything. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but no, I would agree that it's it's yeah. Uh, yeah it's a fantastic ensemble, yeah. fantastic lead performances, and that's another <clears throat> theatrical aspect of it is it's a very limited cast, and and they play different roles, and yeah, obviously part of the experience is that. But like Angels in America did that, where they kind of shuffled the roles around. Well, it's it's a nice example of a film that's um, concepty, yeah. but not intrusive. The few negative reviews I've read have said that it's gimmicky, and it's not. No, and ends up just messing with you more than it does anything else. And not, no, it's, it's not, um, cause Mark Kermode hasn't, the, the film, I think when this podcast comes out, either comes out today or tomorrow. Right. Um, Mark Kermode. Do you listen to anyone else? Film, film critics? Yeah. I don't listen to anybody else. No. Okay. I read other people. You bring them up a lot. Yeah. Like pretty much yeah, every yeah. episode you bring yeah, yeah. them up. Which is fine. Cause like, I remember you saying a while ago, you were like, oh, I don't, I don't listen to him anymore. Yeah, yeah. I don't agree with what he has to say anymore. Well, I rarely do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so is um, this a know your enemy situation? Kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, as far as film reviews go, I listen to, because it's just a weekly, there's a, a couple of minute videos every Friday. Mm. I don't listen like to the full podcast and okay. I read other reviews. But yes, he's the only person I listen to. He hasn't reviewed it yet, but he, um, and also uh, quick, I listen to him. Because he's an accredited film director. Okay. Not argument from authority. R- reviewer. What did I say? Director. Sorry. Yeah, film reviewer. I don't like, even though we are that, I don't watch YouTube reviews of films and stuff like this. Like, who are you? Do you know what I mean? No. I prefer someone that's been writing film reviews since like the 70s and 80s. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's nice to um, get the opinion of the common man, just so you yeah, know yeah. what that is. But the common man. Yeah, yeah, if you... Well, that's what YouTube is. It's just like, it is just people. I suppose... I wouldn't call it the common, but anyway. Because uh, obviously they're people that are making YouTube videos. The common man is our parents. Um, right, okay. But yes, so... But he hasn't reviewed it yet, but he has said that he didn't like it. I don't know why yet. Okay. But he said that he wasn't a fan. And the only thing I can think is that he thought it was um, exploitative. Right. And it's not. It's not exploitative, no. At all. No, well, I mean, as I've already kind of said, I think one of the strengths of the film is the fact that it's not... The fact that it doesn't, yeah, that that, that you don't hate Anthony Hopkins. The fact that you, yeah, it separates his condition from him. Mm-hmm. Like you understand both perspectives. You understand why Olivia Coleman is struggling so much, mm-hmm. and you understand why Anthony Hopkins is becoming so hostile. Mm-hmm. You know where everyone's coming from. The tragedy is that there's no meeting in the middle, right? Which is why you end up with the ending that you get. Nobody mm-hmm. wants that ending, mm-hmm. but it's just that's the ending that has to happen. Well, that's where it goes, isn't it? That's where it goes. And that's like, again, like this is, you know, more a thing of Nomadland because I watched it this straight Mm -hmm. after Nomadland. This is also technically a film of people existing. Yeah. It's just scenes of him in the house being subject to Mm -hmm. this awful condition. Mm -hmm. But there's still this sense of rising. It it still feels like it's building to something. Yeah. You recognise this situation is unsustainable. Mm -hmm. And so every time, every scene that happens, Mm -hmm. it's another step on that journey to 
that well, like it, unpleasant yeah, end. It, it is going, but that's the thing. It is going. His his condition is worsening as the film goes on. Yes. So there is a, a momentum. Yeah, to it. yeah, there is momentum to it. There is not. There is not in Nomad. In Land. Nomad Land. No, you can create momentum. Yeah. When most of the film is just people interacting. Yeah, like if you visualize the film as I sometimes do, like in terms of um, like a, a wavelength almost. Mm. Nomadland is flat in my head. Yeah. There's no ups and downs. It's just, mm, it's that for the whole film. Yeah. Literally monotonous. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, yeah, the father, there's a rising tide of oh, dread and like, oh, you know where, it has to go there. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's not going to end with them finding a cure for dementia. No, you of know? course not. Uh, but yeah, the way it does it is very horrible, but like horribly good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, inevitable. Inevitable. So do we spoil it? I kind of don't want to, really. I mean, it's not its not a film that's like, it's, it's, it's not a big twist at the yeah, end. Yeah, you find out that, yeah. He, he's like, Olivia Colman or something. Yeah, it, it, doesn't, exactly, it doesn't do yeah. that. But, I yeah. did think they were going to do something... A big reveal that like, yeah. oh, it's... They, they kind of maybe did. Well, I, the thing that I was expecting was... And it's silly what put me onto this train of thought, but there's like that moment where he's talking to Imogen Poots. Yeah. And he says, I've got two watches, one on my wrist and one in my head. Mm. Um, and he keeps talking about his other daughter. And we don't find out what happened to her until the end of the film. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, because he says like multiple times, that daughter was my favourite. Mm-hmm. Olivia Colman, like, ugh. Yeah, She's yeah. not intelligent. The other daughter was my favourite. Yeah. And I thought like, oh, are they going to reveal that Anthony Hopkins, because he's become so hostile to Olivia Colman, right. he's basically invented this other daughter. Right. He's like, you know, like maybe it just started out as like, oh, I wish I had another daughter. An idealized daughter. Yeah, and yeah. through the dementia, that has become a real person right, right, because right. he forgot that it's a thought that he had. Yeah. They don't do anything like that. There's no, no. like, big twist. There's but no see, give- that, that would be exploitative. That would be exploitative. It'd be otherizing and kind of sci fi dementia. And that's, I don't know much about it. No. But I never got the sense that it was kind of taking liberties with how it unfolds. No. Yeah. And like the editing as well, like just to talk about it on a technical level for a moment, like when I was saying how um, it's it's gimmicky, but it's not. Mm. Like there's no, when um, it's revealed that like realities are being broken, there are no like jarring jump cuts. It's like Anthony no. Hopkins like clutches his head. He's like, what? No. And it's like cutting between extreme close ups yes. and there's like a, a Hitchcock zoom in on the boyfriend. He's like, mm. are you okay, Anthony? Mm. It's nothing like that. No. It's that- just like, he's just like, it's so seamless. A person will walk out of the room mm. and then they just cease to exist. A, th- a thing, one of the things I like most about it is that given that it's a theatrical adaptation, the temptation when making the film would be, oh, now we can really go visually mad mm. because we're depicting the inside of a person's head as well. Yeah. We can do a lot of visual tricks and inception-y almost. Like, yeah. None of that. It's no. none of that. It's all just very buttoned down. And yeah, there's no, there are no tricks. No. But the editing is brilliant. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. Um, and the moments where they start playing with time, like they, yeah. they mess up the chronology of the scenes or scenes like it, that again, Ouroboric. Yeah. Like the scene, start is the end. Yeah. And, yeah the yeah. scene will begin at the end and then it'll like loop back on itself. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's just like, it's an organic conversation, but it's just like, oh shit, this is, they've had this conversation already. Yeah. Yeah. It's because really that's the thing, I, I think my, that stuff sort of runs in my family. Okay. And like that, I've heard it said that it's, it's bad for the people around you. It's not as bad for you. Mm. It's the people who have to see it happening to you. Yeah. But like Sound of Metal, I think I said, didn't I? Like the poor race, going deaf is one of my proper fears. Yes. The idea of like, you know, a poor racy made me feel okay. Mm. Like, oh, maybe I could be all right. Like the father. It, 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 I mean, it's a whole different set of circumstances. So rightfully so. It is like a horror film. Mm. It's just like, oh God, I do not want that to happen to me. Yeah. You can't help but think that. And I don't think the film should have done anything to alleviate that. No. Like, oh, it's actually, oh, this is the good side. No, it's just fucking bleak. Yeah. It's just horrible. There's no silver lining to it. Yeah, it's, no not, it's not like at it. the end, like when they, when, um, oh, no, I can't spoil it. Um, well, spoilers. So if you really don't want it spoiled, stop listening. Yes. Go on. It's by the way. When he ends up in the home. Yeah. It's not like he wakes up every day and like, oh, I get to, for the, I, every day I get to learn for the first time that I'm in this wonderful care home where everybody right. takes care of me. Yeah. And I get to re-experience the park and I get to, mm. every time I go out for a walk, it's like I'm going for a walk for the first time. Yeah. And he's doing that to like reassure Olivia Coleman. 
It's like, no, we, we, <laughs> it's really not that. Weirdly enough, as I was watching it, I was thinking, you know, are they going to do something like that? And I started, as you do, writing in my head. Mm. So I was like, oh, you know, what would I do if I, what would I write for Olivia, Olivia Coleman's character? And it would be something along the lines of, you know, you're in you. You may not be yourself, but you're in you. And you're in me. And you're in everything around you. Yes. You are still here. Like yeah. in that, a sentimental moment. And though that would have been nice, they don't do anything like that. There's no. no, at the end of the film, even when it does get emotional, it doesn't manipulate you. It doesn't, the, the music doesn't swell. No. And there's no like massive breakdown. Like, oh no, dad. It's just, it's little and it's vulnerable and it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Like it's basically, we said spoilers, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. It's him just kind of crying for his mother, basically. And it, it all just like, I don't know where I am. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Something about a flat. I, I just, and he says like, oh, I feel like my leaves are dropping. Yeah. And the camera pans over to the trees blowing outside and like, mm. oh God. <laughs> it's all like the ending of Relic, isn't it? Which is obviously a, 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 a much more yeah. on the nose horror movie. Yeah. That's and also about dementia. There's but, a clear yeah. villain. Yeah. Like, the d- dementia has manifested as something. I gotta say as a well. A creature or something, you know? Yeah. If Kermode's problem with the father is that it otherizes or horrorizes dementia, he liked Relic. So there's kind of no excuse. Yeah. They do turn that into a horror concept. It, well, yeah, okay. The, 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 um, that might be interesting. Maybe, yeah. maybe depending on what he says, might, it might be worth revisiting. Yeah. Just be like on the next podcast. Like, yeah, so we've we'll, listened to his review. This well, is what he entered. Yeah, definitely. We'll come back to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really, really liked it. It's uh, second favorite of the year so far. Like okay. first or second kind of thing. Um, um, I don't know where I would, because um, it's a 2020 film. So I have to, yes. I, I have to, I can't. I can't make it a 2021 film, can I? <laughs> well, you know, I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I've got a bigger list to consider, but it would be near the top. Okay. And I, what I liked as well is um, after watching this, because I watched Minari, which I was like, eh. Yeah. Bits of it are all right, but eh. Mm-hmm. And then I watched Nomadland, where I was like, eh. I hate yeah. most of it, but eh. <laughs> and my thought was like, maybe I'm just like... Past it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah I, just, I feel that all the time. Yeah. I just, maybe I just, I'm deaf to good cinema now it's all just like a like a, a on a wavelength desensitized like, to it yeah yes I recognise that's a good film I didn't like it personally be gone with it yeah but watching The Father I was like oh no I, I can still recognise good films it can happen Listen, yeah. it's no, it's not a parasite which did renew my faith mm. in cinema but it is like oh good yeah <laughs> Like, I'm not lost yet yes <laughs> like, yeah. it's alright I, I can still yeah. like good films yes and recognise them when they come along yeah so yes, The Father is a recommendation for me. Indeed, me too. Yes. Should we do another film review? Another one? Another one. Final film review. A final a film final review. A final film review. Okay. Well, film in name. Um, <laughs> well, Army of the Dead. What? Army of the Dead. You, uh, I thought you were Oh, because you, you almost interrupted, so I kind of went, ah, uh, and then I regained my footing. Right, okay. I, I wasn't doing like a pan around thing. I see, okay. Save to last, because... Well, we, we, uh, we, with it, yeah. here we are, our, our old friend at yeah. this point, Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder. Um, yeah. I watched this on my own. As did I. Because I genuinely thought, mm. I really genuinely <laughs> thought, Sam, <laughs> okay. that there was no way in hell you would even consider watching this. So like, I find I've it, just done a Zack Snyder marathon. Yeah. I never want to look at a, another one of his films again. I find it interesting that you thought that, because I would have thought... We've just done the Zack Snyder Marathon. We're obviously going to be talking about Army of the Dead. I don't know. You've really seemed done with him. Oh, I am done with him. Yeah. I remain done with him. Yeah. My first note for this film was, I'm not being paid to review films, so I can't be bothered. <laughs> that, was, that was my first note. Okay. Like, I can't be, be bothered honest. keeping good notes about be it. Be honest. How far into the film were you when you wrote that note? Five minutes. Right. Okay. Like, it was the first note I made. Yeah. Like, if I was being paid to do this, I'd write a proper proper notes give a proper review mm. but as as I'm not yeah. I can't be bothered life is just too short yes um, but I have got some notes <laughs> okay alright I have some notes as well okay. but yeah like I genuinely thought like oh, he's not going to be bothered okay um, I've only seen like four films so far this year from 2021 I have to pad my count yes I'll watch it, it yeah. maybe it's there's something to talk about mm. and the other thing as well because I watch i creative in the way that I watched it because I didn't want Netflix to count my view <laughs> right um, I watched the cam version. Yeah. Now, so films are coming back into cinema, so we're seeing a lot more cam versions crop up. Mm-hmm. And even though I knew this was a Netflix film, the fact that there was a cam version on there, I just assumed, oh, 
it's usually a while before the proper copies right. show up. Right. So I'll just watch the cam version. I won't wait. Mm-hmm. Even though I only had to wait like two or three days. Yeah. For the proper as version. I sc- as I screamed at you. <laughs> I yeah. But it turns out that watching the cam version, yeah. I was actually watching it in ideal conditions. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I you're talking about the dead pixel, right? I'm talking about the dead pixel and I'm talking about the absurd depth of field. Yeah. I, I didn't notice the dead pixel, okay. but that, I think, says more about the film than it does about me. The fact that this is... I mean, if you've listened to our Zack Snyder marathon and our hour-long Justice League yeah. review, you know what we think of him. We don't like him, basically. We don't like him. Yeah. Then the fact that this is the first film in which he acted as director of photography and there are dead pixels. <laughs> He's the DP. He wrote it. Mm. Did he edit it? Why not? Sure, I need... Right. It's the most Zack Snyder film there is. Weird coming off the heels of Justice League, which promoted itself as the most Zack Snyder film yeah. there is. And before that, I would say Sucker Punch was the most Zack Snyder film there yeah. was. And I would say in spirit it is still. Sucker yeah. Punch is still the most Zack Snyder. But in terms of sheer actual contribution, this is the most, yeah, auteury, auterial yes. film he's done. Yeah, yeah. it bobbed in and out of my attention for the most part. It just got to the point, I was like, oh, I guess I'm looking at it now. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that part of that is just the film is not engaging or interesting or entertaining or funny or anything. Yeah. Um, and the way it's shot, it, it the film is bobbing in and out of attention. It as well. really is. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, when you watch a cam version, it's such a compressed image that you don't notice the dead pixels, mm-hmm. and it's so naturally blurry, and the color is so washed out. Yeah. That not only do you not notice that it has a depth of field of like two millimeters, mm-hmm. but um, the CG blends better. Yeah. Because seeing actual trailer footage, the CG is really obvious. Oh, yeah. I know it's like a 90 million pound, 90 million dollar film. Mm. So as far as like big budget films go, it's not all that. Yeah. It's a pretty like a tight budget. Yeah. yeah but it's yeah, a Snyder indie. It's a Snyder indie, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's it's it's like a really obvious CG. Yeah. Yeah, it. I'll refer to Kermode once again. Like his review for the film was just this, this air of utter despondency about him. And that's basically my... So I'm just kind of don't care. <laughs> I'm just so dumb. I'm not a fan of his. Yeah. I doubt you'll ever do something that I like again. Mm. Watchmen was okay. But uh, yeah, I don't think he's capable of doing a good film. No. I just don't think it's in him. No. I um, don't know. Maybe in this in this new cinematic universe he's setting up. Yeah. He'll, maybe something good will come from it. Who knows? <laughs> well, that's the thing. This is probably his fourth best film. Fourth yeah. or third, depending on your imagine that I know imagine that because that's it, the thing it's it's competent like in terms of, it feel it moves like a film yeah 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 it conducts itself like a film specifically Aliens specifically Aliens as Red Letter that's Media like, pointed out it, and like I haven't seen Aliens in a yeah, while a time, so like yeah. I'm unfamiliar with it but when they were showing those side by sides it's oh, indisputable yeah. and um, American Werewolf in London as well yes I, that one because that's one moment you could argue it's it's an homage yeah I can write that off as an homage yeah, yeah. I can't excuse aliens not the aliens no yeah he's just the, the saying it's his fourth best film all that says is how grotesque the others are no yeah yeah because like, like Snyder at his worst he is incomprehensible incomprehensibly indulgent yeah this should be the worst film on, on any direct of any director's career yeah someone made this and like oh yeah obviously the worst is Army of the Dead yeah but this is one of his better <laughs> one of his better yeah. films well, this like is, a mid-range this Zach is Carapel. his inception it felt like it basically right? yeah yeah which basically like right Zack Snyder you did all, you, you've been in the system for a while making the superhero films for us you've made us money go project your passion yeah go do your yeah. film the film you want to make well I want to make Army of the Dead okay well it's, it's the cinematic universe alright slow down yeah. you've already just lost the cinematic universe maybe don't try and start a new one yeah there's gonna be like robot zombies Snyder oh my then, god yeah. that's what it is it's a rebound yeah he lost the cinematic universe yet there was a breakup and he overcompensated have you seen that like groveling online where like Warner Brothers said like we're not continuing the Snyder yeah. we don't care basically yeah. it's not for us anymore and Snyder was like I'm so disappointed in them for not recognising it right. like oh if only they saw it's not <laughs> not, okay, not groveling like he's, yeah. he's sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. He, does, he has groveled I bet, I bet he's written a song about it <laughs> speaking from experience yeah. I bet he's written a song yeah that's so clearly what it is it's a re- it's an overcompensating he, he slept with a girl oh yeah now I'll, I'll do the, it's a TV show it's like just Zach I get it. You're trying to convince us you're fine. Yeah. You're not. This, it's all right. Just don't do anything for a while. 
<laughs> go, go on holiday. Just, yeah, just go go to yeah. Jamaica, find yourself. Just don't make films for yeah, a while. Yeah, find yourself and get lost, you loser. <laughs> don't, don't come back. Yeah. Find yourself, just make sure I don't find you. Yeah. Yeah, this like yeah. There's, there's apparently like I think the safe cracker, the German safe cracker. He's getting his own spin-off. Film. Yeah, they're apparently going to do those robot zombies, which I didn't even pick up on. Mm-hmm. I, I was I must have been checked out at that point because I just didn't see them. Apparently, they're getting their own prequel TV show. Yeah, which is also going to describe anime, isn't it? It was animated and animated specifically okay. anime. Uh, but apparently, that's going to describe where the zombie virus came from. A crucial, crucial it, it, detail. It, 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 came from the zombie in the, the, in the truck in, yeah. in the truck yeah what do you think i need to know the specific facility or specific planet he came well, from well are, are they alien zombies yeah because he says like it's yeah. an alien oh yeah that fucking scene where he's just like um the soldiers are in the car is like well we've just come from you know yeah and he's like you know where did we come from he's like well area 51 yeah. so it could be you know what well, you know, it could be a, like if that if the guy that you're traveling, the general military, yeah, ness, <laughs> yeah, if like the guy you're traveling with with yeah. doesn't have all of the information, surely he's supposed to not have all the information. Yes, you have different levels of uh, like, oh, this information is classified to him, compartmentalized. Yeah, yeah. I can't just tell him we're, we're transporting an alien. Yeah, otherwise they would have told him. Yeah. So what's this whole like? Oh, you know, we're traveling with you know, an alien. I mm. think you know. Yeah. No, you wouldn't. There's a reason he doesn't know. Yeah, need to know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so apparently the fact that it came from an alien that was in Area 51 is not sufficient enough explanation. We need a TV show to fill in those gaps. Do, do, isn't there... Um, the, do the, the zombies have sex? They have they sex. They rape women. They have sex with each other and they rape women. And they give birth to zombie babies. Yes. Yeah. Because Snyder... Is 14. He's a 14 year old boy and doesn't understand things. Yeah. He doesn't understand that that's not. You don't do that. No. You don't have zombies raping women. And if you do, you don't release that in a press release. I think. After the film has already come out. If a studio executive told Zack Snyder your film needs to show restraint, he would just have a BDSM scene. (laughs) Like that's. (laughs) That's who Zack Snyder I do Snyder wonder is. if it's that, though. Because we like when we did the Zack Snyder Marathon, we talked about um, like the common elements mm. with all of his films, both like outside of the films themselves and within the, the actual films. Mm. And that does seem to be a recurring thing with Snyder films, is after the film has come out, he starts releasing all of this, all of this information that's not in the film, yeah. but it apparently explains what's going on. It's holding ho- the studio hostage, isn't it? Yeah. Because he wants a- the fanboys to go, oh, we must have it. Is it that? Is it a case of like he genuinely, he's such a bad like storyteller that he just forgot to put this information in or did the studio tell him you can't we can't have zombies raping women I've told you a thousand <laughs> oh, no. times Zack Snyder you can't do this yes yeah, so, don't put it in the film yes yeah, so then he, he leaks it to the press basically then he floats it yeah so we oh well we want to see that you know because his fans are all 14 year old boys yeah you know that 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 is all it, you know as every trailer for every one of his films has said He's a visionary director. He is. So he just has so many ideas, you couldn't possibly cram them all into one he film. Need, he needs glasses. Yeah, he needs glasses. Yeah, yeah. he's a visionary, he needs glasses. He, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's crap. Yeah. I, it's, I, it's, <laughs> he's such a boring filmmaker. He's such a boring filmmaker. Uh, I've got a bit two specific notes that I could be bothered with. Okay. I know it's one is at the very beginning, one's at the very end. Oh, funny that. So it's clearly like, oh, right, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep notes. Yeah. Not bother. Oh, it looks like it's reaching an end. I suppose I better do one more note. <laughs> yes. Uh, the opening montage has echoes of Zombieland, which is a far superior film. It does. Also, like, I think that's a thing he does anyway, right? Yeah. Like because Watchmen, Watchmen yeah, yeah. it's the best part of that film is the yes. opening montage. And um, as Red, again, as Red Left Media pointed out, that's the story that I think everybody wanted to see. Yeah, ha- it happening. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end, it plays Zombie by the Cranberries. That's its level. After yeah. the fucking emotional climax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Claire, his daughter. Claire, I don't know. Claire, I don't know. I'm I don't gonna know say, any I'm, I'm gonna name. say Claire. Okay. Claire shoots Dave Batista. Yeah. In the fucking face. Yeah. Because he's turning into a zombie, or has turned into yes. a zombie, and the whole like, because they're not talking to each other, mm. because that's a thing that happens in films. Yeah, yeah, a thing yeah. happened in the past, and now the family, the members, don't talk to each other. Yeah, and the and film they re- bonds them together. Yeah, and that happens. Yeah, and like we see. Dave Batista shoots his wife, 
her mother in the head. Mm -hmm. And then the film leads us to believe that that's why she's not talking to him. And then there's one moment in the film where I think Zack Snyder thought he was being subversive, Mm -hmm. where she's like, oh no, that's not why I'm mad at you. Mm -hmm. I'm mad at you because you didn't didn't talk to me after that. Yeah. So I decided not to talk to you because that fixes the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, she's um, a woman, George. Well, she's a woman. Yeah. And she's in a Zack Snyder movie. Yes. So she's got no chance. Exactly. Um, and yeah, so at the end, she has to do the thing where she shoots her father, which would be would work if the point was that she was mad at him for shooting the mother. Mm. Because if she, even though she will have forgiven him at that point, the fact that she has to do that to him, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I get him now. Empathy. Uh, yeah, I get yes. it now. I'm so sorry, Dad, that I ever yes. put you through any. But because it's not that, it doesn't work. Well, I suppose it's hard to then... Good for her, I suppose, but she can't reconcile with him after realising that, can she? No. So, but yes, no, it would have made thematic character sense. For that to be the case. Yeah. So she shoots him. The main character is dead. Mm. The daughter is in mourning. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas is in smouldering ruins. After having been nuked. After having been nuked. It's a Zack Snyder film. Because it's a Zack Snyder film. And they play zombie by the cranberries, cranberries. Because he's got no sense of tone. But it's not just that. It's a song that it just happens to have the word zombie. That's all it is. I know it's like, oh, it's a slightly melancholic song. Yeah, so. yeah, but it's it's about the troubles. It's about the, the troubles. Normal, a very specific. And it's because it has the word zombie in it. Yeah, that's it. It's because the song is called Zombie. Yeah. He Googled, oh, z- songs for zombie film. Yeah. And zombie came up. Yeah. So I'll have that in my film. Yeah, and I'll put it at the end because like, oh, zombie. And that's it's clever because, yeah, people who know the song will know that it's called zombie. Yeah. So that's its level. It's that. It's precisely that shallow. But wh- whether you like that decision or not, whether you like the inclusion of it or not, I'm just saying, yeah. whether you like the inclusion of it or yeah. not, I don't think there's a single person watching that film that would not be taken out of the emotional oh, yeah. scene by hearing zombie by the crack. Because yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Everyone knows. Oh, it's In there. Your, be- uh, everyone knows that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, everyone knows it. And they all know that, like, oh, he's done it because it has the word zombie in it. Yes. So, like, right, that, that emotional scene you just did, you just undercut that entirely. Yeah. You fool. Yeah. You foolish But fool. we know that. He can't... He doesn't know what his audience should be feeling at any uh, no, given time. No, Is it cool? That's the question he always asks. Yes. Is it cool? Yeah. Uh, that's all I got. That's all you've got. Yeah. Yeah, like, a couple of my notes, I was like... I was keeping notes, but it's clear from my notes that I just wasn't really <laughs> engaging with it properly. It's, just, like, it's just basically the note equivalent of that scene in Bruce Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like I, I call into question like the point of the, the zombie tiger. But why would you? Is the thing. What do you mean? Like, like as far, why would you even bother asking that in a Zack Snyder film? No, but that's the thing. Yeah. Like I'm supposed to think, oh, a, a zombie tiger. That's really cool. Yeah. I can't wait to see how that's used. But I was just like writing down like, what, what's functionally what's the difference between a zombie tiger and a real tiger? Um. Well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe I'm not they're... seeing it as the cool image that it is and like you know the fact that I suppose the fact that it's a zombie means it won't attack the other zombies I don't think it's well, necessarily like, no it's just a tiger I don't looks cool. think it's necessarily that it's that, that it's more dangerous than a real tiger it's just zombie tiger yeah that's it's not because oh it's a m- much more threatening now hmm. the only kind of justification for that is it's a trained tiger hmm. if it's a trained tiger and it doesn't, doesn't just attack people now, it's a zombie tiger, and it does attack people. Okay. But yeah, like, that's the only context in which it poses a significantly greater but risk. But they're in Las Vegas. Those tigers are trained. They anyway. are trained, yeah. You like, didn't, you uh, didn't what, even... What are they called? The the, the, the duo that had the tiger. Siegfried and Roy. All right. Like, yeah, they... Um, I, I don't think it's because a, a zombie tiger is all of a sudden threatening. No. It's just, wouldn't that be cool to have a zombie tiger? Yeah. Yeah. And but, it stripes a different color, right? Yeah. yeah. And, it, and, like, half of its face is missing. Yeah, yeah. But it's just a tiger. Yeah. Yeah, but like you could like yeah, it's a trained tiger. Maybe its owner turned into a zombie, and that's yeah. fun. Yeah, because like you, even though the owner is a zombie, because the zombies are intelligent in this. Yeah, it still listens to its owner. Like you could have a fun little thing where like oh, if we target, if we kill the zombie owner, mm. then yeah, maybe the tiger will turn on the zombie. So that'll give us an opportunity to yeah. I mean, you know, it depends on how much you want to play with zombie law. Which like, given that this is a zombie film, yeah. Surely that's what you should be doing. <laughs> Especially in like 2021 where there's just been, there's innumerable zombie projects. But again though. If like, you got to do one, you have to be yeah, creative with it. Yeah, yeah, but there's still, again, you still have to abide the rules. Like, so are zombies just gone or do they have, films treat it differently, don't they? Yeah. Some films, they retain some personality. Yeah. Like in this, you've got a zombie king and a queen. Like there is a whole thing going on with that. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing. They're called zombies, but they are 
aliens. Or at least yeah. the, 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 the virus that is turning them is alien. Yeah. But as far as the tiger goes, like the only thing I would have done with that is in the opening bit, the montage mm. or whatever, you show a man, a tiger sprinting through the halls of this palace mm. being pursued by a zombie man. Oh, right. So it's, you know, and he's trying to eat the tiger. Okay. And obviously it's kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. you're 180ing it. But that would okay. be a cool image. A tiger trying to hide from a zombie man. Yeah. And he just bites the tiger. But um, yeah. No, no, it's much cooler if it's a zombie tiger. That, that, that would be mildly inventive. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah, just zombie tiger. Um, tits? Yeah, there are tits. It's been a while since we've seen tits. Yeah. In, well, a, in a Snyder film. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, both, both statements are true. Yeah, that's true. To be honest. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, um, the Army of the Dead, Nomadland, and the Father, mm. um, they make up what I have dubbed the Titty Triumvirate. <laughs> triumvirate. Triumvirate. Okay, the well, Titty Triumvirate. Why are they the Titty Triumvirate? Because in the opening montage of Army of the Dead, you see zombie tits. You do. In uh, Nomadland, you see Frances McDormand's tits. And her bushy vag. And her bushy vag. Yeah. But her tits her are t- the yes. you see first. Okay. And in The Father... Mark Atis calls Anthony Hopkins a tit. Oh, okay. I was wondering, did I, did I miss the nudity in the <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, 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 that scene where Anthony Hopkins gets his tits out. Yeah, exactly. Well, he probably does have tits at this point, doesn't he? <laughs> As do we. Has Olivia Coleman ever got her tits out? I don't think so, and I hope she never does. I, I could never see that. No, that's... She's, I, she's... Well, yeah, she's not a sexual... There are sex scenes in The Favourite. Yeah. But it's like her fully clothed being fingered, basically. Yeah. Yeah, she's not to be sexualized in that way no she probably wouldn't she's got more class than that yeah she's not she's not kate winslet like yeah but like you know if 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 you i don't want to stop her doing that no like there are situations where it would be the right thing to do the film would be the right context yeah i just i just think my world would shatter yeah you can't do that if i saw olivia coleman's tits yeah absolutely not even in like peep show and like you know when she's in a more comedic frame Mm. never none of that no hit the thing uh yeah i don't want to see olivia coleman's Boobage, no. No. No, not at all. Yes. So, yeah, this, this, because, uh, because, so yeah. The, the tit trilogy. Or the, yeah. The, <laughs> the titty triumvirate. Yeah. Triumvirate. Yeah. Okay. The titty triumvirate. Um, yeah, it's not, um, if you were scheduling, if you're curating a movie night, mm. these aren't the three you'd pick to go together, are they? I suppose not. <laughs> But if you That's were, if you were, if you, thread you if you were, for whatever reason, if the, yeah. these were the three you had lined up, yeah. I've given you the theme. That's the, okay, tits. Yeah. Right. Tits. <laughs> tits. Was that Hot Fuzz in there? Tets. Yes, bit Olivia Coleman. Tets. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. God, she's yeah. Well, cause that's, I was thinking because she is very sexually voracious in that, isn't she? But it's never actually. You never see anything. No, she's, and it, she's and it's like and yeah, but it's 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 not um it's innocent. Yeah, I suppose yeah. No, I think, like as far as like um, profanity goes. Yeah, 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 it's it's not vulgar. In yeah, that she's not. Yeah, like, it's not vulgar. Seen it a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's just kind of fun little wordplay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like, oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna fucking She's a family family friendly nympho. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I could never see her tits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so back to Army of the Dead, <laughs> I guess. Um My notes for Army of the Dead. Okay. Gone. Yay. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Carry on. I my notes are on the computer. I can't really do uh, that. Okay. Can you just smash up the computer? And well then the, stop? The, the podcast would stop. Yeah. Wouldn't I suppose. It? yeah. Maybe after. I'll smash up my computer okay. after the podcast. I'll film you doing it. Okay. So, uh, no. fans definitely what keep an eye no, out for that no, video. No, no, I didn't commit to this. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, God. I mean, there's a scene in in the in the when they go down to the vault mm-hmm. where the safe cracker is safe cracking, mm-hmm. I think. And then the black guy who's with him. I don't know. I think it's just banter. But then there's a moment where he's like, oh, maybe we're, st- you know, maybe we're actually stuck in a time loop. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, we're, yeah. and we're being forced to relive all of our mistakes over and over again. I fucking panicked. Panic set in. I legitimately panicked when that happened. Because I believe... Zack Snyder sets things up and then forgets about them. He's just incapable of like, oh, did I set... Oh, I didn't set that up. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah. Not only did I set it up, but I reminded you of it. And I'm just not going to pay that off now. Mm Mm-hmm. But I believe that Zack, Zack Snyder would consider that adequate setup. Oh yeah, for a time loop. Yeah. So I'm genuinely panicking. <laughs> so I'm glad that didn't happen. Yeah. But yeah, I watched half of the film in fear. <laughs> but you know, he's going to be oh he's going to be doing time loops now. I can't say that that would have been something. 
It would have been. I suppose it would have been. Because that's the thing. On the, we haven't given a plot synopsis for this film because we don't like it. And we. We, <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I'm, I'm, we tend not to do that, don't we? <laughs> no, <laughs> we do, yeah. like, we're not even going to give it the time of day. No. Um, yeah. Going off the surface, oh, it's, a, it's about a bunch of um, bank robbers, like high tech mercenary bank robbers hmm. that have to steal from a vault in Las Vegas. Oh, by the way, Las Vegas has been overwhelmed by a zombie horde and they're going to nuke it. It hmm. sounds like so much fun. Yeah. But there's nothing to it. I mean, if they'd done a time loop. So what I'm saying, that would have been something. That sentence should ring deafeningly for a film that's about zombies in Las Vegas. Yeah. That's about a bank heist. Yeah. Starring Dave Bautista in the lead. Yeah. Yeah. He's not there yet, Dave Bautista. I mean, no. it's, it's a Zack Snyder film, so okay. Yeah, give him, but, give him like, something to work with. Yeah, I'll give him Dune and we'll see what yeah. happens. But Yeah, it's not, it's yeah. not Bautista's fault. It's not, no. It no. does feel like he's giving it a go. Yeah. Which is more than what Snyder deserves, frankly. It is. Um, but he, no, actually, Batista gave up a chance to be in the Suicide Squad to be in this. He did. That, so that is his fault. him a little bit. Yeah. That is his fault. Yeah. Um, I hope that he, he's learned his lesson. Yeah. Frankly. Although, uh, like, this is the most one of the most popular Netflix films ever. Of course it is. So this cinematic universe is probably very well going to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Batista is, well, no, he's dead in fairness, but, yeah. you know. Oh, he, he probably thought who he knows? made the, He probably thought he made the right call. And that's yeah. depressing. Well, no, because he said it was to work with Zack Snyder. And yeah. that could be cloaking the fact that it was more money or whatever. It could like, be. That's just what an actor says. Oh, I have to, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to work with the maestro Snyder. Mm. But no, that's what, that is what he said. He said, it, I, I, I wanted to work with Zack Snyder. Mm. So he's a fan of his other films. One would assume. Imagine that. Yeah. What, what, what must it be like to be a person who likes <laughs> Zack Snyder films? <laughs> I can empathise with Hitler. I can empathise with <laughs> aliens that want to, you know, destroy the planet. Right. They've got a point. Yeah. But Snyder, Snyder fans. Zack Snyder is exhibit A of that point. <laughs> yeah. But Snyder fans, I actually can't put myself in your shoes. I could walk a thousand miles in your shoes and they would still feel like your shoes. <laughs> no, they're not my shoes. Yeah. I don't want these shoes anymore. Please take these Please shoes take back. Please take your shoes back. Yeah. I really don't know. I really don't know. I, I I want to know. What do you want to know? Oh, what it's like to be them. Yeah. But I fear being a Zack Snyder fan, they wouldn't be able to articulate it to is me. It like, is it like anything to be them? Because the consciousness mm. is the experience of being something. Mm. That, that it's like something to be something. That it's like something to be Jordan. It's like something to be Sam. Yeah. So, you know, that glass there doesn't have... Con- it, th- th- it's not like anything to be that glass. It can't experience anything. Okay. So uh, uh, most, a lot of animals, it's not like anything to be them. Are, you, they don't have- are you comparing... Are you saying that Zack Snyder fans are inanimate? Basically. Okay. I'm, yes. I'm saying that there is no consciousness there. Right. It's, it's like it, me saying to you, what do you think it's like to be a cow? Okay. I'm sure cow, cow you know, they have um, nerve endings and neurons. They feel pain. Mm. But little else. <laughs> right. And I think that Zack Snyder fans probably, they drool like a Pavlovian thing. Maybe they're more like dogs. They drool when they see the films and that's kind of the most they're capable of. I don't think you can be a Zack Snyder fan and feel pain. No, yeah, exactly. You, you can't feel so they, pain. They just feel the joy equivalent. Yeah. They look at the Snyder film, they, they slobber over the floor and, they, <laughs> and then that's kind of, that's all they contribute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Quite, right, quite thanks. possibly, yeah. Yeah. A um, couple more uh, little things. Go on. The so like, yeah, as you say, Las Vegas gets nuked. Mm-hmm. They go into the city with well, like a day to spare, something like that. Yeah, because um, like that's the sensible thing to do. Mm-hmm. And then like they're just watching the TV randomly, and then the news is like, oh, um, we're actually bringing the nuke a, a, for, a, a day forward mm-hmm. because Zack Snyder realized, oh shit, there's like yeah, there's half an hour left and there's no threat. Which is a, a, a recurring theme with him. Mm. That he, he realises that he, he forgot to do stuff. <laughs> yes. Shit, I forgot to kill off characters. and yeah. yeah, I forgot to... Yeah, like one character dies... No, two characters die like in the film. Yeah, and I was thinking more about Sucker Punch, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in the finale, everyone dies. Yes. Because yeah. it's a Snyder film. Because he's, he's the directorial equivalent of a Hoover, isn't he? Right. It's just like... <clears throat> Nothing, and then at the end, oh shit! <laughs> got to yeah. suck them all up. Yeah, you know? yeah, got to do that. Yeah, yeah. So they bring the, the the nuke forward. The justification in the film is that the nuke was going to fall on Independence Day, 
because the president thought it would be, quote, really cool. Right. Is that a jump trap? A what? <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> Was that a Trump jab? <laughs> that is the title of this episode. <laughs> I don't even know what I said. You said, is that a jump trap? <laughs> <laughs> what even is that? You you got it wrong. No 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 I know I know yeah, what yeah. happened. But like oh well, like what would it be? Yeah, a, a jump trap. Now that that is a phrase that exists. What well, is when that? you said is that a jump trap, I thought oh some new internet thing. Okay. Like oh what's this now? Right. Uh, I don't know. Well, I I get no. I have zero intuition about jump trap. Okay. It's a jump trap. It's a jump trap. I guess a piece a piece of sporting equipment. But okay. I don't know exactly what. Is that a jump trap? It's a jump trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, is it a Trump jab? Yes, yes probably. Yes. Yeah, because there's a wall in the film as well. There's a wall in the yeah. film. The and... thing is, though, because I've heard some people say, oh, very, like, you know, even even cri- people criticizing it, like, okay, it's not very depth, it's not like very heavy, ha- it's not very heavy uh, political satire, but there's a wall, and that's something that's, you know, re- that's uh, relevant. Yeah. That's something. If you're going by that, the, oh, yeah, it's a brilliant analogy, this film is a really good argument for the wall. If you're yeah. saying, like, well, <laughs> yeah, there shouldn't be a wall? Yeah. Like, no, the wall is a good thing in the film. Mm. And it's like, people who are saying, oh, you're slicing saying Mexicans are zombies. It's yeah, it's a thing. really clumsy analogy because there's a yeah. coyote that lives. There's a wall and then there's a camp right outside, right next to the yeah. wall. Yeah. Where people just are. Yeah. For some reason. And then there's a coyote that lives in that camp that ferries people into Las Vegas. Yeah. Because, like, coyotes ferry people across yeah. the Mexican yeah, border. Yeah. So even though it's, it's like a camp against the wall yeah which is an American thing it's the American side that has the camps yeah yeah, yeah the yeah, coyotes yeah. are ferrying people into Mexico quote unquote see that like that's okay like inverting that like oh they're actually ferrying people into Mexico hmm. but yeah it's a completely null thing because it's an entirely sensible no one's going to dispute that it's sensible to have that wall there to yeah. keep the zombies in yeah. prison so yeah it's you know yeah, but yeah, Any, like, anything with a wall now is it's called allegor allegory. No, of course it yeah. is, and like with with that whole like oh the president thought it'd be really cool. Yeah, like I just thought like that must be a Trump thing because like with Biden as president that just felt like what? Yes, because like you know in in the universe of the film it yeah. might be a fictional president. Yeah, but yeah. I think like most people go by the rule of if your film is set ostensibly in the real world. Yeah, yeah. Unless yeah. you specify something isn't mm. the the real world equivalent, mm. we're going to assume it's the real world equivalent. So if a film came out between 2016 and 2020 yeah. and it talks about the president, but it doesn't specify who the president is, mm-hmm. you're just going to assume it's Trump. I, I'm not 100% with you there, but like sometimes it's clearly yeah. that. Yes. In terms like of- if, if they have a president and then it's, oh, it's President Bartlett, like a fictional right, president. Right. Like unless you specify... That it's a fictional character. Well, you just think, I'm going to assume it's... In Homeland, <clears throat> Homeland, the early years, the president's brought up quite a lot. Okay. I never thought of Obama. So, because okay, of the, the show it is. Like, I don't know who the president's meant to be here. No. So it's not 100%, but I get, I, yeah, you generally infer they're doing a Trump thing. Yes. Yes. In terms of the president said it would be really cool. That's obviously trying to point to the childishness and the kind yeah. of... Uh, the shallowness of, of Trump. Yeah. I will say, though, those in glass houses... Yeah. Like Zack Snyder, don't be having a go at someone for doing something just because it's really cool. Yes. <laughs> like, you're the president, literally. Yeah, that's literally what yeah. you do. Yeah. So, I'll, you know, I'm not the biggest Trump lover, and I'm certainly not the biggest Trump hater, and I'm happy if people take jabs and swipes at him. Mm. But um, you need to be in a good position to do that. <laughs> yes. If Paul Greengrass wants to take a swipe at Trump, you go ahead, Paul. Yeah. Zach, get back in the fucking box. <laughs> get in the bin. You yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that camp was really weird. Do you know what? Actually, though, I was watching that camp, and this again, it's just a testament to the fact that I just wasn't taking in the film. Mm-hmm. Like that whole situation with the camp where they were just like outside. Mm-hmm. I don't know what like I, is the idea that they were um, evacuated from Las Vegas and they just got nowhere to go. I guess yeah, like refugees basically. Yeah, but, it's but like, right next to the yeah, it's yeah. like a refugee camp. Yeah, there's a um, there's a video game called Enter the Gungeon. I've heard of this. Yeah, I think I brought it up a couple yeah. of times. I'm a big fan of Enter the mm-hmm. Gungeon. Um, and, like, the premise of the game is that there is this um, uh, this giant uh, fortress, this mm-hmm. temple called the Gungeon. Mm-hmm. And within the Gungeon is a gun that can kill the past. Okay. That's, like, so if, you, if you've if you got to, like, basically navigate the perils of the Gungeon. Right. And if you get to the heart of the Gungeon, then you can use the gun to kill your past. 
Okay. So, like, the way that it's framed and everything, there's basically, like, this little community mm-hmm. that are on the... Um, that you can build before you actually enter the dungeon. Right. So you've got, like, merchants and you've got uh, people who give you new skills and people where you can trade whatever for. Mm-hmm. This little community that builds over the course of the game. And I thought that would be, like... I was watching the film, like, that's actually, uh, like, a neat little idea that the film is sort of about this camp mm. on the fringes of this zombie-infested city. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of about, like, still do the film where, like, a guy goes to Las Vegas to rob it. Mm-hmm. But the camp itself, it's basically this community of people who've all gone to Las Vegas with the same ambition. Mm. But whether it be that some people are just not prepared to go in, or some people need to trade resources, or they mm-hmm. need to build their strength, this community has formed. So you can spend a little time with that you No, know, I feel like I've seen films that have done that. Yeah. But I can't bring them to mind. But yeah, like where there's a central, there's an area that people try to get into. Mm. And, and then, yeah, civilization kind of forms around that attempt. Yeah. That endeavor. Like maybe the, the guy who actually runs that camp, he the is... Leftovers a little bit. Sorry, go on. Maybe, I, I, yeah. you, I don't know. But there's a town that basically it's supposed to be miraculous because oh, no one vanished. Miracle? It's called Miracle. Yeah. And on the fringes of it is an encampment where they all want to get in. But but it kind of becomes a community, um, like hippy-dippy community, mm. and it's all caravan, like nomad land. Yeah. And there's a coyote there that tries to smuggle people into the thing. Right. Okay. But that's kind of formed around. We want access. Yeah. And yeah, anyway. Yeah. Cool. And like I was thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe the, uh, the guy who actually runs the camp, the mayor of the camp, if mm. you will, like the unelected mayor of the camp, he mm. is the... The only person who's ever gone into Las Vegas and has right. come out alive. Right. Like, he failed to collect the money and everything. Mm-hmm. But he recognized that everybody was coming to Las Vegas with the same ambition. So he fostered this little community. Right. And maybe, like, you know, Dave Batista and his team, they go into Las Vegas and they succeed in their mission and they come out and then they get double-crossed by that guy. Mm. He's like, aha, the whole reason that I set up this community is so that stronger people, better people, mm. could rob Las Vegas on my behalf. And now that you've succeeded, right. I'm going to take the money off you. Mm-hmm. I am the surprise villain right. of this story. Mm-hmm. I was just writing this whole little film in my head mm-hmm. while Army of the Dead was just doing whatever it was doing mm-hmm. in the background. Yeah. Because it's such a boring, like, oh yeah, it's just like, it's well, like, might, it, it's just a, it's an analogy for like um, uh, camps. Your mind's got to do something when you're watching it. Yeah. It's not an analogy for anything, is it? It's just stuff. It's, there's nothing going on. Well, okay, no not an analogy. Yeah. It's just like, oh, um, refugee camps are a thing. Yeah, it looks like a refugee camp. Yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's, it's not saying anything. It's got no point to make. No. It's just stuff that he thinks is cool. Yeah. That isn't. No, it's not. Filmed in a boring and sickening way. Yes. Yeah. And it really is a slave to just ordinary... Bleh. Yeah. In terms of the stories. Why did that guy have to betray them? Plot. If the whole point of getting them... Like, he... For some reason, he needs a team to go into Las Vegas mm-hmm. so that he can steal the head off one zombie. Yeah. He couldn't just go in with the coyote. Because mm-hmm. when he actually gets the zombie head, he only uses the coyote. He apparently needed this whole other team. And yeah. he needed to convince them to go there under the false pretenses that they were going to steal money mm-hmm. from the vault. Why did you need to betray them? Just be like, oh, I just I want the zombie head, mm. but you can have your money mm. as penance, as reward, as like a gesture of good faith. Mm-hmm. You rob the vault. You do you. Mm-hmm. I'm here for my own reasons. Mm-hmm. You do you. Mm-hmm. Why did he have to trap them in the? I think in the a- thing asking questions is counterproductive. <laughs> okay, I just because it's crap. I mean, the, the, no thought went into it. No, you know. Yeah, uh, there's a team because um, he likes aliens. And he likes films about teams going in, like, to try and do heights. She's wearing the same fucking bandana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same bandana. T- she wound me up. Oh, yeah. Tig Notaro. Yeah. Who replaced Chris D'Elia. Oh, Chris it? D'Elia. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that's one um, positive that I'll throw in the film. Yeah. Way. Yes, I watched the cam version. Mm. So maybe, like, someone who watched the 4K version will disagree. Mm. But... Not really. I didn't know prior to the film yeah. that she was a replacement, a mm-hmm. CGI replacement. And there was no point in the film that made me think that. I, I did know, but I, I don't. I wouldn't have noticed. I don't no. think. Um, it's like there are. There's a lot of shots in which she's on her own. Yeah. And there are some shots where she's CG'd into the into the chaos. Yeah. And there was never. It wasn't Prison Break series five. No. Where he's like he's like clearly like he's not even masked. He's, he's properly. lit in a different area. Yeah. Like they're all just. <laughs> yeah. They've all got like this. You know middle of the day very bright sun-kissed look and he looks like he's in a fucking noir movie yeah like half of his face yeah, yeah, is just yeah. dark shadow 
Yeah, like Zinro to perdition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'll I'll give it that. Like it did that well. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Like it, that's all not, you get. That's that's all you get. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you get. Again, it's at a certain level. So even that doesn't say this one. But there there's enough that's competent enough in it. Mm. It's like yeah, yeah, all right. But yeah. so what? Yeah. It, that's the the bare, literally the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, I saw what my final point as well. Yeah. Like everyone was sort of, I saw a lot of people. I don't know who was everyone, but mm. I saw a lot of people complaining about the runtime. It's like there's no reason this film should be two and a half hours. It's like right. if you see the Zack Snyder film, pal. yeah, yeah, this hot on the heels of Justice League, yeah, which everyone loved. Yeah, and was like, oh yeah, you, you sit down for four hours. It was I sat, I did it in one sitting. It wasn't a problem. Yeah, and this is two and a half hours, and like you're whinging now. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same people, in fairness, but... Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like two and a half hours for a Zack Snyder film. It's like, yeah, I'll take that. The, the inexplicable thing, it's had pretty decent reviews on mm. The Dead. It's like done all right, okay. critically. Did they did they watch it? Did, or did they do what you did, where, where they they made a note at the beginning, yeah. they woke up five minutes towards the end and they made another note and was like, yeah, it's good. I, I suppose. I, I guess I, I just had the reverse Yeah, reaction. I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't fall asleep because the other no, critics, I they did. fell asleep. Uh, yeah, okay. So they didn't know yeah. that it was boring. Though if you had to guess whether a Zack Snyder film was good or bad, <laughs> surely you guess bad. I don't know. I feel like you would assume that like, oh, now Snyder is out of the system. Now that he's allowed to do his own thing. The rebel. And he's returning to Dawn of the Dead, which by the way, yeah. there's a Richard Cheese cover in this, isn't there? Yeah. I think, I think, I could be wrong. And I apologize if I'm wrong, but I think that song that scores the opening montage is a Richard Cheese song. Oh, what? Isn't it? Is it Elvis, Viva Las Vegas? Yeah. Viva Las Vegas. Yeah. It's oh, not, it's him, is it? It's not Elvis. It's, it's not it's, Elvis. It's, it's Richard Cheese doing yeah. the cover of that song. It yeah. sort of switches to a, like a melancholic female cover and I don't know if it's the same song yeah. or whether he kind of switches halfway through. But okay. I think it's Richard Cheese. So like, oh, Dawn of the Dead, Richard Cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a return to Zombies. Yeah. Which Snyder was good at if you believe people. Sure. So not us, not us. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, a Zack Snyder zombie film after he's quote unquote learnt as much as he's learned through his career. That can't be bad. Yeah. Oh, I slept through most of it. Well, I I trust that it was better than Justice League, so I'll give it a good review. Yeah. I enjoyed my sleep, so we got a good review. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was a solid nap. Yeah, the film is basically a loud ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Just you know, knock me out. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, there is more to complain about. This is a one where, unlike Nomadland, this deserves the hate. Oh yeah, definitely. But you can hate. only um, exert so much energy yes. before it's, it stops becoming fun for anyone involved. Yeah, yeah. So we'll leave it there. This okay. is not a recommendation. It is not. But in the pantheon of Zack Snyder, this sits firmly in the middle. Yeah, this is a middle of the road Zack Snyder film. Is it better or worse than Three Hundred? Because I think Three Hundred is the middle point for Zack Snyder Ooh, movies. Um, that is a hard question. Because it's, it's worse than Watchmen, Man of Steel, and Dawn of the Dead. And it's better than Sucker Punch, Batman v Superman. And what what was the other one? Um, what was it, Zai? No, there's another one. There must be. The, the three DC movies. Yeah. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. 300, Watchmen, and Sucker Punch. Oh. And, and he did Gahul as well. But, um, oh, we did, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Justice League. Yeah, yeah. It's better than Justice League. It's better than just yeah. It's better than just the better than Batman v Superman. It's better than Sucker Punch. Yeah, and it's worse than it's worse than Watchmen, Man of Steel, and Dawn of the Dead. So three hundred is its main competition. Yeah, they they're the ones in the middle. Is it better or worse than three hundred? I'm gonna say worse. Ooh, that I don't know. I don't know. Three hundred was boring. Really, really boring. Yeah. Army of the Dead was long. And I feel like there's more objectively wrong yeah. with Army of the Dead. 300 is, yes, there are things about it that are well done, well made or whatever. Yeah. Like, it's ugly. We don't like the look yeah. of 300, but it's a well-realized look. It's consistent. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, it's and Army it, of the Dead's worse. And it's shorter. And it's shorter. So, yeah, I think 300 might pip it. Yeah. Okay, so it's the fifth. It's the fifth best. It's the fifth. Or best. fourth worst? Fourth fifth. worst, yeah. Okay. Just, yeah, middle of the road. Yeah. Snyder. Congratulations, Zack Snyder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is how you're starting your new cinematic universe. And you are starting it, because people yeah. watch it. So, yeah. this is this is it. This is, we're in this now, Sam. Oh, yeah. This is the future of the podcast. Yeah. Zack Snyder films. <sighs> hey. No. 
Stop. No, go away. <laughs> Stop. And on that note. Yeah, let's start. <laughs> Stop. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yep. Sarah, then. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.